does when it's low in the sky with trees and such. And, uh, and another one came up last night where a caller called up and said, uh, uh, the speed of light is not constant. I said, well, no, actually the speed of light in a vacuum is constant. He said, well, wh- when it goes through a prism, it changes, because obviously that's why you get the colors. And I said, well, that's because that's a prism is not part of a vacuum. Uh, the speed of light is a constant. But if it, it, it changes when you, uh, for instance, I gave the example of uh, uh, your legs in a swimming pool. Your legs aren't actually bent. Those are the light rays bending, and that's why uh, it, it's, it's changing of the light rays. And the speed of light they would not be constant in a, a different media, such as water or glass or air. The caller was insistent. No, that, that's not right. The, the speed of light is not constant. Uh, sir, the speed of light is constant in a vacuum. That's why it's always got that caveat. That's why... There's actually a, 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 a physics equation for the speed of light. It's, it's C. It's the constant. That's e equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. The speed of light... Anyway, point I'm trying to make with all this is there's a lot of bad science out there, bad astronomy, and um, I'm not quite sure where it all begins, but uh, I found a great website. In fact, a listener... Uh, emailed me a link to this website. It's badastronomy.com, and the creator of the website, Phil Plate, is on the line. Where are you? Where are you calling from tonight, Phil? I'm in Sonoma County, just oh. a few hundred kilometers north of. <laughs> oh, good. But you can't hear KABC at night, I don't think. No, I don't think so. All right, we'll try. It's 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 AM 790. We're also available on the internet at kbc.com. Well, since I'm talking on the phone, I can't get on the internet. Right oh, really? You don't? You don't? I thought you know a guy who has his own website would have like a I don't know like a. <laughs> A DSL line or something. The age of broadband touched me and went away when I moved out here. I'm, I've got a DSL package sitting waiting to get installed. I just haven't done it yet. Oh, is it the self-install pack? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, good. I can't wait to open up my computer. I'm a scientist, not an engineer. I'm sure I'll elect you. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Well, I, I'm sure you battle the same thing. Uh, I uh, the same things I battle on your website, and it's just amazing how uh, confident people are in bad science and bad astronomy. What you said before was great when you said that it's amazing how insistent people are when they're wrong. And that's really true. And it, it's funny because you can't convince them that they're wrong. And they'll say, well, scientists know that they're right. They insist that they're right. <laughs> and I said, well, that's, that's true. But a scientist, a good scientist, is usually willing to change their mind on something that they're, they're not completely positive about. Right. And you cannot convince people when they're convinced that they're right. You just absolutely can't. Well, where does some of this stuff come from? Like this whole thing about the moon being low to the horizon. I'm sure you've dealt with this. I, I haven't seen it on your website, but I didn't. I didn't delve very far. That it's, uh, it's, the, it's in there, but it's funny because what's on my website is a link to a couple of other websites. And the the thing is, nobody really does understand why the moon looks bigger on the horizon than up high. There are a lot of explanations, and and some of them are better than others. This one that there's one that just came out that talks about how you perceive distances and sizes and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I've read this paper three times. It's a psychological paper. But it is an optical illusion. The the paper. It is an optical illusion. It's not a matter of uh, because there's more atmosphere lower on the horizon than there is higher. That's just nonsense. Right, that's correct. It's something that's going on in your brain, and we don't know what it is exactly. And like I said, there are theories. But if you think about it, if you draw yourself a picture, you'll realize that the moon is actually a little bit closer to you when it's on the horizon than when it's overhead, Mm -hmm. because the Earth is curved. Mm -hmm. And so it's like roughly the radius of the Earth closer to you. Mm -hmm. So it should look... uh, uh, Wait a minute, let me make sure I got that right. It's closer (laughs) to you when it's overhead than when it's on the horizon. Right, right, right. So it it should look bigger, but you you can hardly measure that difference. It's only a little bit. Right, right. It's it's an inconsequential difference. It's the kind of thing that you'd need... A and very sophisticated not, uh, telemetry to be able to, to right, make that. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not um, because of the atmosphere magnifying it or anything like right, that. Right, wrong. And, but, but so many people have this belief, and it, it's, it's just amazing. I even said, I don't want to take calls from people who don't believe this to be true. <laughs> if you don't believe it's true, go call the Griffith Observatory. Go call anyone who works in an astronomy department in any university. That's right. And they'll tell you this is one of the most common misperceptions. And it, the thing is... A lot of these misconceptions are um, are not so easy to, to figure out why they're wrong for for someone who's not you know steeped in the field. But a lot of them really are easy to show. I mean, it, it's it's almost trivially easy to do this. Just go outside, like you said, with a ruler and do it when it's rising, and then wait a few hours and do it when it's high, and you'll see it's the same size. Mm-hmm. Or even better, use a telescope on low power. With my old telescope, the moon used to fill my field of view when it was on the horizon and when it was up high. Mm-hmm. It, just, it was clearly not changing its size. It's mm-hmm. really easy to prove this for yourself, but most people uh, uh, 
don't go through that kind of trouble. What are other uh, bad... Uh, by the way, this is... Uh, I'm talking to the creator of the website, badastronomy.com. His name is Phil Plate. And uh, what, what, what are some other big ones? What are uh, common misconceptions that people have that are... And, and do you kind of focus on things that are being printed and published and broadcast in, in our popular media that get things wrong? Or is it more about... Uh, um, you know, uh, folklore, societal folklore about uh, about things that are not right. It, it started off with the folklore. It started off with uh, just things that I'd heard, things that I'd seen. And then um, some years ago, I did a movie review because there was a movie that was on uh, one of the TV stations, and it was just awful. And um, I reviewed the science of it, and that I started getting a lot of email. And that's when I started doing the movie reviews. Now there's Armageddon and Deep Impact, and I've got uh, Red Planet and Mission to Mars on there and a mm -hmm. bunch of other movies. Capricorn One is one of your favorites, I understand. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I actually, I think Capricorn One is a decent movie. It's a great movie. I bought it on DVD. Is it really? It's great. It's uh, O.J. Simpson, and uh, I mean, it's just so, it's so, it's just great. It, yeah, Mr. Barbara Streisand, yeah. <laughs> it's a silly movie. It's got, it's got some silly things in it. But as far as just the plot and everything, I think it's an okay flick. It, as long as you realize, you know, it's fiction, folks. It's yeah, it's real. it's it's heavy fiction. I mean, there, there's a scene where they're flying in a uh, Learjet, yeah, and they're wearing like the Time Life operator headphones. You know, just the one little. <laughs> <laughs> Can you order, please. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, um, the whole the movie's about um, a NASA conspiracy. They they fake a Mars mission because NASA's in trouble with money and different things and. And in the, they really got the uh, astronauts off in the Nevada desert, and they're filming all this. Right. In the meantime... Well, that's what happened, isn't it? Supposed to be, um, they're supposed to be near Mars, and they're talking to their wives. <laughs> and they're, they're just chatting conversationally two <laughs> ways, forgetting that there's a roughly two-minute time delay between here and Mars because right. it takes light that long to get there. Right. And so it's like, hey, that might have tipped me off right away. Well, wait, what are, are, you, are you saying that the, uh, the, lunar, uh, the lunar landings weren't faked? You know what? They were absolutely real. <laughs> it's... A, it's it's hard to believe that, you know, what you see is what you get with the lunar landings. They well, you know, I, I, there's been a couple things that have come up on the show over the years, and uh, one of them actually came up just the other night, too, about, in fact, uh, this is one of my quiz questions. Why can't you see stars in the photos and videos taken by astronauts? Don't answer that question, because it's a quiz question. It's coming okay. up a little bit later on the show. There are a couple of reasons, but... Okay. But, yeah, I mean, that's, but that's a very common one. That's, that's, that kind of gives credence to this belief that that's somehow... That's the first argument they give. Mm -hmm. And... and in, in defense of that, without um, without giving away the answer, okay, right, um, the scientific reason, uh, you you can imagine that NASA is going to fake the moon landings. Okay, they're going to have a conspiracy with tens of thousands of people. <laughs> right. They're going to spend billions of dollars. They're going to have technicians and engineers and cameramen and special effects artists to do all of this work so that they can fake these things out in the Nevada desert somewhere. Right. But they forgot to put stars in the picture, <laughs> right? Okay. And that's what these hoax believers are right. touting as their biggest evidence. Right. I mean, do you really think the people at NASA would be that stupid? Here's the other one that I really like. How is it that when, uh, when Neil Armstrong takes that, you know, one giant leap for man, one small leap for man, the other way around, yeah, right. how is it that there's a camera there? If he's you, not... If he's you, not <laughs> This is, this is actually, I'll answer that. Yeah, do I'll it. I'll tell you, the answer's very simple. Right. They had a camera mounted on the landing leg pointed at the hatch. Right. Knowing that this was going to be one of the greatest moments in human history, and they wanted to film it. Right. Right? <laughs> you got to remember, if you, if you don't think of it as a conspiracy, and you think of it as a bunch of really, really smart people that had to build a rocket ship to go to the moon for the first time, mm -hmm. they really were kind of smart. And make their way back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, is what, that is what Kennedy said. And so, you know... They're, they're actually smart fellows. They could figure this stuff out. Right. And but they couldn't, remember, they couldn't remember to paint the stars inside right, exactly. the, uh, the hangar where and they're making the movie. So you can assume that there aren't stars in the picture for a reason, for a scientific reason. I won't tell you what it is. Right. You know, there is an answer to this question of how they could film it, um, why they didn't leave a huge crater with this huge engine, mm -hmm. why there was dust left around the landing site. Well, now, am I going to get the engine. answers to all this on badastronomy.com? I actually um, I'm writing a book based on my website, and I've got a chapter all about this which dissects most of these arguments, the big ones at least. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't actually webified what I wrote yet, if you can, if you can use that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't have it on my web. I don't have my explanations on the website, but the, um, or, or at least my take on the explanations. I mean, it's just science. Mm -hmm. Everybody can describe it differently, but in the end, the physics is the same. Right. But if you go to my website, I have a link to it on my front page that says, something about the Apollo moon landings. And if you go there, there's a list of websites, both pro and con, that describe 
from from the people that believe it's a hoax and from the people that have copious evidence that it was real. Well, and this is fun. Can, you can take your pick. People should go check it out. Uh, Bob Plate is the creator of uh, BadAstronomy.com. And uh, thanks for coming on the air with me for a f couple minutes here. It was fun talking to you. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. And uh, I'm sure we'll uh, talk to Bob again sometime soon as uh, more of these seem to proliferate in our uh, popular culture and in movies and uh, certainly on this show when people call up and uh, have baseless arguments with me. How dare you? 719, this is Talk Radio 790 KBC. I am Mr. KBC. We're going to take your phone calls when we come back. Also, coming up tonight, aside from the three quiz questions, which will be our, uh, joining us around 8.30, uh, right after the 8.30 news, the answers to the three quiz questions, we're going to premiere a new Mr. KBC theme song. Corey Stevens is going to come in studio and uh, play his new full orchestra version of uh, one of the Mr. KBC theme songs. That's all coming up, so stick with me. Let's check traffic now from the KBC Traffic Center. I'm Timothy Greenwood on the KABC Traffic Watch. A problem in Griffith Park on the Ventura Freeway, 134 eastbound before Forest Lawn Drive. An accident in the carpool lane. You're back. The voice of Southern California. I am here till 9 o'clock tonight taking your phone calls on this Martin Luther King Jr. birthday on Talk Radio 790 KABC. And what better way to celebrate uh, Dr. King's dream than for me to continue taking your phone calls at 1-800-222-KABC. Till uh, 9 o'clock tonight. The three quiz questions coming up next hour, and also, um, and that's it. Oh, also, go check out this picture that's on the uh, KBC.com website. Click on the Mr. KBC quiz and scroll down a little bit. Above tonight's quiz questions, you will see a picture, and it is not what it appears to be. I'll explain why a little bit later. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a phone call from a guy who sent me the uh, picture and uh, why he's so upset about it. Uh, if I don't hear from him, I'll read to you his uh, email message, and uh, it'll all become clear. Hi, welcome. You're on, Mr. Caves. Good evening. Hi, after listening to Simon Levi, why a friend of mine rented some property from the city of Los Angeles last year, and in her contract, she had to state that she would never sell any item that came from Burma. Why is that? <laughs> Uh, the, the city of L.A. will not let her rent if she huh. sells any products from Burma. Wow, that's weird. I, 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 Are the people prosecuted there or something, or persecuted or whatever? I don't know. I, I really don't know anything about Burma other than what uh, uh, Simon Levi calls that, and tells me. It, it just triggered that in my mind. I was like, hey, you know what? I, maybe he'll know why the city of Los Angeles does not want to have anything to do you with You know what? It. The next time he calls, I will ask him that question. But you would think that it's something like, do you remember when we were... when? Uh, uh, they were having that uh, in South Africa. They were having uh, what, oh, apartheid. Remember? Civil and, uh, rights type stuff. Yeah, the apartheid in all the cities and uh, college camp. Like that was a big thing when I was at UCSB. Yeah. Was whether or not the uh, yeah. University of California yeah, system should do. All the gold food grants had to be traded in for ca Canadian gold and all that stuff. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I was just curious. That's it. Oh, one other thing. Yes. I I, I get manufacturer coupons and they say no cash value except for one. Twentieth of a penny. Uh huh. Does that mean I can get twenty of those and cash them in for a penny? I don't think so. Then, well, then why do they say one twentieth of a cent? I think I think it has to have by law it has to have some value, and why no, no, no. uh, and why the law says it has to have some value I don't know. And then so I can't get twenty of them together and go to the store to give me a penny. No. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> no. All right, sir. Thanks for the call. Let's see here. How about uh, there's probably a very good reason for it. And I just don't know it. Hi, you're on, Mr. Cavey. Good evening. Hi, Mr. K. Hi. You know, you were talking about the bubonic plague on Friday. Yes. And, you know, that was... Caller asked the question about it. Why don't we still have the plague? And it was spread by, uh, was spread by the mites on, uh, on rats. Infected rat fleas. Fleas, yeah. Right. But the reason why we don't have it is because there was a vaccine developed. Yeah, but not when uh, the vaccine wasn't developed at the time of the Great Plague. The no, the death. Great Plague was in 1347. I know. Well, so then why did it why did it go away and then suddenly reestablish itself, what, in the 16-somethings in, in Europe? Well, what happened was they had another epidemic that swept Europe in 16... Well, the question is, why, why, how, how is it that an epidemic of something like uh, a bacteria spread by fleas on rats... Why does it disappear and then and then reemerge and disappear again? Because they said it came in waves at intervals over the century, and then 
in 1894, there were two scientists, one in Japan and one in France, who had both independently discovered that the plague was a bacterial disease spread by infected rat fleas. Mm -hmm. Then it took another 20 years before a vaccine could be developed and made available worldwide. It was spread by rat fleas, but wasn't it also contagious? Wasn't the plague contagious, bubonic plague, wasn't it? Couldn't you cough on someone and give it to them? That's exactly right, and that's why we have this word quarantine. Mm -hmm. See, the word quarantine comes from an Italian word for 40. Mm. And what happened was the, the people used to keep these sailors, you know, away, that the people who thought they had the disease, away from other people for 40 days. Yeah. And... But the last major outbreak was in 1910 when 60,000 people died in eastern Siberia. Now, are you reading from some... What are you reading from? Oh, I, I had written a paper about it a long time ago. Oh, all right. You know, it was because it was the, it was the worst single disaster ever to happen to mankind. The Black Plague of the, thir uh, of the 14th century. Right. 30 million people died. I mean, a quarter of the European population. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for the information. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Bye-bye. How about, uh, let's see, how about uh, you? Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. I'm not a regular, but I thought it was essential to wait on the phone 40 minutes to correct something that was on your show last week. Okay. Uh, it's not perseverance, and it's not spelled P-R-E. The word is perseverance. It's spelled P-E-R. I mean, the guy was so emphatic last week when he spoke to you. I, oh, you know what? You must be calling about something from Thursday night, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know what night it was. You know what? Thursday night show was a uh, was a, a, a half hour of Thursday night show. I was broadcasting live from downtown Disney. And no, it, no, it wasn't that night. I uh, well, okay. It was. It was another night when a guy came this correction of for February. Lots of words. Uh, you know what? That must have happened a long time ago. It wasn't no, no, last no, it was week. Definitely, I, I only listened to you last week, so it All wasn't right. a long time ago. What do you mean you only listened to me last week? Well, I mean, well, you know, as May said, you know, May said when you were on vacation, uh -huh. Kelly Lang filled in for you. So I was wondering, could you take a six month vacation and have Kelly Lang fill in for you? You again? enjoyed Kelly Lang. Oh, I love Kelly Lang. She's easy on the eyes too. Yeah, that's better have her on television than radio. And not on TV. I and and on your show. and a good cook. Oh yeah. Yeah. How do you know? I've been to her house. Uh -oh. Yeah, the one, the, the one in Mulho, oh, on, off of Mulho. Why don't you give out his, her, her home address there, no, sir? She doesn't live there anymore. You know she buys and sells all these houses. Yes, but well, why is it that for twelve years? How is it that you know so much about her? Are you so stalking her? About, I, I'm a Kelly Lang fan. She talks about it all the time. All right, she talked about what? That you're a Kelly Lang fan? No, that she buys and sells houses. Oh yeah, she does. But I was at that house, the, the one you mentioned. Yeah, and it wasn't on Mulholland. It was near Mulholland, I guess. No, it was well, on Mulholland. Okay. Yeah. Why are you giving away her address? Because <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't live there anymore. How do you know that? She moved back. <laughs> she moved back. Yeah, I was there for a party uh, Mother's Day two years ago. Oh. Yeah. And you know, you know who else was there? Her husband of the, t of the moment. No, 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 no. Who else was there? Tell no, me. it was... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the comedian that talks like this. What's his name? I forgot his name. I did this last week, too, when Norm I told him. Norm Crosby? No. No. Buddy Hackett was there. Oh. Yeah. Talking a, a, bl a blue streak? Uh, no. No, he wasn't at all. He was, you know, he was like a regular guy. He oh, was... because, you know, usually, you know, he's very funny, but he's very blue. Is he? I haven't seen his stand-up, but I hear it's great. Yeah. One today at your nearby Mercedes-Benz Center. See them on the World Wide Web at mbsocal.com or call 1-800-4-MERCEDES. So close to the newsmakers, you can touch them. Talk Radio 790 KABC, the voice of Southern California. 733, this is Talk Radio 790 KABC. I am Mr. KABC. Next hour, Corey Stevens will come in studio and premiere a, uh, a new Mr. KBC theme song. It's actually the, the same Corey Stevens theme song, the kind of bluesy theme song that we have now, except it's got like a full orchestration. It's not just uh, him and a guitar on this one. And uh, we'll do that a little bit later on tonight. Also, the Mr. KBC quiz coming up an hour from now. The an Actually, you'll get the, uh, the answers an hour from now. All right, to the phone line. And you can preview those quiz questions if you go to kbc.com right there on the uh, homepage. Click on the Mr. KBC quiz, and you will see tonight's quiz questions. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hi, Mr. KBC. Hi, welcome. Another Mr. KBC vixen. First of all, I want to tell you, I, I just love your program. You're my favorite program to listen to. I even hate to get home because then I have to get out of the car. Sometimes I don't. You know, the show works in your house, too. <laughs> I know. But right. 
I, I love it because more often than not, I learn something when I hear you. But I'd like to be more than just your traveling companion. <laughs> uh, I'm calling about the discussion about NASA. Now, first of all, let me say I do believe that we had moonshots and everything, all this stuff. But? But based on the logic that your caller mentioned as far as all these intelligent people put all these things together, right. and yet they failed to paint the stars in. Right. Well, if, if I follow that logic, then I would have to say that we really didn't have a problem with Y2K because all those intelligent people couldn't possibly have forgotten to provide a fifth. Well, did we have a problem with Y2K? Well, well, I mean, <laughs> wasn't there something about... <laughs> oh, I forgot. That's right. The world, the world did end January 1st of last year. Well, I'm sorry. It didn't end, but I, they... They oh yeah, my electricity, my electricity right? didn't, my car didn't start, the electricity didn't work, and yeah, that's right. I forgot. All, it's only been a year, but I forgot all about that. Well, yeah, but we didn't need really need. To I think spend we. All that I, money. I, I remember something about uh, the grocery store shelves were going to be vacant, right. that we weren't going to be able to get gasoline, and yeah, right. that all happened, right? Yeah, it all did. It did, yeah. It, How quickly we forget, right, ma'am? Right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Thanks. All right, bye bye. Hi, welcome. You're on, Mr. KBC. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? I am better than most, not as good as some. Oh, uh, great. Uh, a question for you about fire suppression in a building. For, okay. for the systems that are non-water-based, how do they typically function? Wow. I, uh, you know, I always see most, most, uh, most fire suppression is sprinkler, internal sprinkler systems. And I haven't seen anything else. Maybe in some high-tech industries where they, the water would, damp, would be too damaging for the equipment more so than firewood. Maybe they have... Uh, some kind of foam or uh, like they use for jet aircraft or if you're around some kind of you know certain things don't respond water spreads by some certain kinds of fires like a grease fire for example water will spread that uh so i'm i don't know of any others but i imagine that depending on the specific application that uh, uh, uh like for example at uh you know in an oil refinery Probably water-based fire suppression wouldn't be of much value. They need they need other other systems. I I just don't know what they are. Right. Well, you know, when you're looking at say a modern office building, I you don't, you I, don't I, see water sprinkling systems like they used to have. Really? In older buildings. Well, this is I, news. I, I just don't know what it is. But oh, this is news hard. to me. Uh, other than you know, they have systems now where uh, doors that that are open but uh, are actually held by magnets that uh, release. Right. Like for example, in the building that we're in right now, to contain a fire in certain in certain areas uh, as, as part of the fire suppression systems right. they'll actually shut doors right well you look know. at your roof you don't see sprinklers up there do you yeah there's sprinklers in here right now there really? sure is yeah right there how old is your building uh very new maybe five years old six years uh, old seven years uh, i'm told seven years old this building all right yeah but again we're not we're not you know refining petrochemicals in here <laughs> we're hosting radio talk shows <laughs> i hear you all right sir yeah, Thanks care. for the call. Bye. Appreciate it. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Hey, sir. Hi. I want to ask about uh, an important issue that was uh, raised uh, from one of your quizzes, and it was several callers called about it, and that is the Abbott and Costello show, the oh, pilot God. episode, The Drugstore. What's, what more is there to say, sir? There is uh, one important thing that I want to mention. Yeah. Now, first of all, that show was shown as reruns for many years after 1952, so a lot of people have uh, know about it. Really? Are, yeah, are you one of on them? on the East Coast. Are you one of them? I'm one of the people that have seen them, yeah. You, as, saw, as reruns. It, you, you saw it in reruns on television. Yeah, on the East Coast. They showed it over and over all through the 60s, the 70s. Hmm. Many, many years. It was all on an independent station. Did it hold up well? Yeah, they were very popular. But, well, there's a lot of it. there are a lot of Italians on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Lou Costello is Italian. Oh. Well, anyway, the, uh, regarding that show, there's an important incident. <laughs> but that doesn't necessarily... Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Mexicans in Los Angeles, but doesn't mean they like Chico and the Man, you know? <laughs> all right. Yeah, but they like Cheech and Chong. Apparently so. Okay, now, this, one, one more thing I want to say, and you'll probably never hear about this show again. All right. Hopefully. Uh, in that show, three little boys walked in while Lou was working as a clerk, mm -hmm. and they asked for, they wanted licorice. Now the licorice was way up on the top shelf, and Lou had to climb are you, up a are ladder. Are you trying? Are you trying to say licorice? Yeah, well, that's the way the boys said it. They said licorice. Okay. 
Licorice, right. Right. Now, the, Lou had to climb up a ladder to get the licorice on the top shelf. So he I goes, was, I was, to I was hoping floor. you, I was hoping you had some kind of a speech impediment I could make fun of. Well, uh, the, the boys had it. Okay. Now he, Lou goes to the first boy. He says, "What do you want, kid?" And the boy says, "I want five cents worth of licorice." So Lou goes all the way up the ladder and he gets the licorice and he comes all the way down and then. He says, here, and then he goes uh, to the second boy. He goes, now, what do you want? And the second boy says, I want five cents worth of licorice. So Lou gets real angry, and he goes to the third boy, and he says, do you want five cents worth of licorice, too? And the third boy, third boy says, nah. So Lou goes all the way up the ladder, gets the five cents worth of licorice, goes all the way down. He hands it to the second boy. Then he goes to the third boy, now, what do you want? And the third boy says, ten cents worth of licorice. <laughs> So he chases the three boys out of the store, and that's the most important element of that uh, pilot episode of Abbott and Costello, the drugstore. Well, I think that proves one thing, sir. What's that? East Coast Italians love Lou Costello. Yeah, not many other people. All right, thank you for the call. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Hi, welcome another Mr. KBC Vixen. Hi, how are you? I am better than most, not as good as some. Oh, me too. Um, about... Oh, a few weeks ago, oh, maybe a month ago, my mother said that she heard you talking to some people. I think they were guests on your show about um, producing CDs and getting around copyright laws. And my question to you... I, 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 first of all, I don't, I don't have guests on the show. I have people come hang with Mr. KBC, and I don't recall anyone talking about uh, making C home duplications of... And maybe a caller might have brought it up, okay. but, but not, not someone that was right. on. Because I did not hear the show myself. Okay, right. My, the reason I'm asking is because I have 27,000 songs. Mm hmm And for my friends... What do you mean you have 27,000 songs? I have um, about 2,200 CDs. Okay. And each CD has anywhere from 10 to 16 songs on it. Okay. Okay? So I'm a collector. And a friend, friends would say, okay, you know what, I would love to hear this song, this song, this song, and this song. And as a present, I have duplicated maybe 10 or 15 songs of their favorite song as a present. And, mm -hmm. they, and they just love it. Mm -hmm. And I would like to do it. You mean you burn, you burn CD copies for your friends? One song at a time, right. Okay. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And I make them a special... Edition something different. you create a you create a home mix based on what they, they, CDs that you list. have. I, I understand. Okay, go on. Okay, so I've got a list. Kind of like making a best of tape on cassette, only you do it on CD. Right. Okay. So, is there any way? I mean, if, out of my twenty-seven thousand songs, if I were to sell ten thousand CDs, the chances of five people asking for the same song is probably very rare. And I realize it's copyright, it's copyright, it's copyright. And it always says no portion of and no portion of can be... Um, duplicated, duplicated without permission of the copy holder, right. the copyright holder. Okay. But if I'm only doing one song, maybe five times for 10,000 al albums, and everybody wants 15 different songs, one Beach Boys, one, one Barbara Streisand... Let's just get to your question. Is there a way... To get around this, or do you have to go to every single ra uh, record label? Is there any way that I could commercially sell personalized CDs? No. Not without permission from the copyright holder and paying them royalties. And actually, you would also have to probably pay royalties to the songwriters as well. To the songwriters. To the songwriters. Yeah, that would be, you know, ASCAP and BMI. You'd have to get uh, clearance with them as well. And so, realistically, uh, it's not something you're going to be able to do in a, in, a, in a small scale at home and make a profit. No, but if I had a business and had a bunch of people working... Well, that's, you know, when you watch on TV, it's like, you know, the greatest love hits from the 70s, right. and, you know, that they, they play all these different songs, and obviously they're different li a album labels. They're, they're paying a royalty for every CD that they press uh, and a royalty for every song on, on each of those CDs. And I, my understanding is it's about eight cents a song. About eight cents. A song? Yeah, about eight cents a song, plus the cost of pressing the CD, marketing it, labeling it, and uh, so it mailing it. And it's what? So it is possible. It is possible, but again, it's about obtaining licensing agreements, and you know those those companies 
uh, that, that do those television commercials, they, they have attorneys, they have st a staff of people that uh, do nothing but obtain the rights. Rhino Records kind of does a similar thing. They obtain the rights to uh, songs from previous albums and put out greatest hits for different uh, artists. That's right. And uh, you heard, oh, that's who you heard on the show. That's right. The guys from Rhino Records were here. Rhino Records. Oh, okay, yeah. that's that's who that's who came on the show and was talking about uh, making CDs. But that's that's a that's a big enterprise that they have. It's a big company with uh, you know a lot of money behind them. But like I would not make and and, and relationships with album, uh, with album you know with with uh, recording labels, long established relationships, and that's why they're able to produce those those uh, those CDs. But now I'm I'm looking at something that. One person would, if they chose 15 songs, nobody else would ever pick the same 15 songs. Uh huh. Right. Right. And yeah, there's a there's a similar thing that uh, they used to have at Tower Records, where you right. could, on a touch screen, pick right. some songs and it would make a CD for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And you'd pay by you know each song would be a dollar twenty five or something. Correct. Yeah. And so, how, did Tower Records get knocked off or? No, Tower Records is still in business, but I don't think this is a very successful enterprise. This. Uh, you know, it's it, you, you make you make the CD while you're standing there, and with a touch screen, you pick songs. It's a very limited number. Uh, whatever the number of songs is, it's far less than what you have in your collection. So but, I. Uh, but they were able to do it somehow. Yeah. Without, without without getting in trouble. No, not without. They they went and got the licensing rights to those songs that they had in their system. I see. And paid a royalty every time someone would would choose one of those songs. Okay. Now, like Napster. Yeah. Um, there's some new kind of music company like music uh oh, what do they call it it's, it's mp3 mp3 mm -hmm. and what um and are they doing something of something similar mp3 actually made licensing agreements with different record labels and, and they're three million dollars it, it cost what was it three million dollars it was much more than that okay no it was it was much more than that and uh, Napster ultimately will make some kind of a settlement, uh, and th there probably is going to be some kind of a fee for uh, either per song or per hour usage of Napster. And uh, that's that, that's down the road. That's inevitable. So, is there any way that uh, what would I need to do to go to an, uh, like an entertainment lawyer? You know, I don't even know where to tell you to start. I, 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 half of me thinks that the best place to start would be the company that's already doing it, like the ones in the Tower Records, the kiosks at, at Tower Records. And find out how that company did what they did, and see if see if someone will give you the the inside information and figure out how to do it on your own. But I I, I have a feeling as a as an enterprise where you're going to make money, I think you're up against some pretty uh, pretty tough odds. Okay. But I wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks for the call. Mm, bye bye. Seven forty seven. This is Talk Radio seven ninety K ABC. Back for more of your phone calls right after we check the latest traffic. I'm Timothy Greenwood on the KBC Traffic Watch. Problem in Griffith Park, 134 eastbound before Forest Lawn Drive. A disabled vehicle in the carpool lane. The backup goes to Bob Hope Drive. In Orange on the Costa Mesa Freeway 55 northbound before Catella Avenue. An accident in the carpool lane with injuries. That involves three vehicles. In Chino, the 60 eastbound past Ramona Avenue, there is an accident. In Burbank, still an accident on the I-5 northbound before Burbank Boulevard. A multi-vehicle accident over on the right shoulder. Debris in the lanes. And 101 eastbound at DeSoto. An injury accident. Now off on the right shoulder. On the KABC Traffic Watch, I'm Timothy Greenwood. Talk Radio 790 KABC. Total Fitness Solutions. Busybody has them, and now you do too. Welcome to the new Busybody Home Fitness, where you'll discover a whole new and exciting world of fitness products, programs, people, and ideas for better health, exercise, and nutrition. The new Busybody. The best treadmills, bikes, home gyms, but they're so much more than fitness equipment. They have the tested and proven fitness programs you want, the personal support and how-to you need to achieve real results. And they're going to make a believer out of you starting now as they launch their Busybody Body for Life Challenge. The 12-week fitness and nutrition program that will change your body for life. Plus, the chance to win $25,000 and be enrolled in the $1 million Body for Life National Challenge. Let their certified fitness advisors guide you through this amazing... Number are the same. 1-800-R-E-G-E-N-I-X. Regenix for better hair. You know that driving drunk is a serious legal matter. You also know that not just any lawyer can help. At least you should know that. The place to go if you're ever accused of driving drunk, not the Yellow Pages. You want to go to the Top Gun DUI defense attorney, Miles Berman. 
Uh, here's his toll-free number. It's good any time, including right now. It's one eight 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 four top gun I recommend that you get proper representation for the court and for the DMV, which is what you'll get when you call Top Gun DUI Defense Attorney Miles Berman. So if you or someone you know, a relative, a friend, or a co-worker, has been arrested, charged with a DUI, don't let any time slip away. Get on it now. Call Top Gun DUI Defense Attorney Miles Berman at one eight 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 four top gun and learn about your legal rights. The initial consultation is free. Any delay could result in big fines, a loss of your driving privileges, your auto insurance, your job, reputation, even your freedom. They're all on the line. You don't have to plead guilty, so learn the facts by calling Miles Berman at 1-888-4-TOP-GUN. That number is good anytime. Also good in L.A., Ventura, and Orange County, where he has uh, offices. 1-888-4-TOP-GUN or visit the website. It's topgundui.com because friends don't let friends plead guilty. Your own daily news magazine, the KABC Morning Show with Dave and Amy, weekdays from 5.30 to 10. Now, more of Mr. KABC on Talk Radio 790 KABC, the voice of Southern California. I am here till 9 o'clock tonight, taking your phone calls. The three quiz questions coming up next hour. Also, Corey Stevens coming in to a premiere a new Mr. KABC theme song. It's the full orchestration of a uh, song that I've been running for... When did he make that for me? Were you, Chris, were you my born op? You weren't even here. So a uh, full orchestration version of the uh, Mr. KBC, one of the Mr. KBC theme songs coming up. Let's go with the phone lines, and we'll start with you. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, that lady's asking for, like, a big lawsuit. <laughs> the woman who just called wanting to make home CDs. And, yeah, wanting yeah. to make home CDs. Uh, there have been a couple companies that have, that have been legitimately doing that, but the problem is you can't get the rights to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you want the Beatles, you want Led Zeppelin, uh, they're not going to allow you to have the rights to their songs. So. Probably right. But, uh, I mean, the one thing that's a little distressing... Well, how does Muzak do it? Uh, well, they license it, but again, you're not going to hear... You know, there's a lot of stuff you're not going to hear. You might hear I, I can't think of a cover version, but you're not going to hear, like, the original version. Oh, of course, right. No, you're going to hear a cover... Yeah, Muzak is not going to play... Uh... You know, they'll do a Muzak version of Revolution Number no. 9, but you're not going to hear that in an elevator. Right. Is Muzak even still around? I think they are. Yeah, they, uh, I mean, that's, if you have, if you play music in a business, right. you have to pay a license fee to ASCAP, even if yeah. you're like a dry cleaner. Right, right. That's a, that's a very weird and foreign concept to a lot of people. And here, here's, I'll take it even a step further, because I actually, uh, I met a guy and had a long conversation with him who worked for... Uh, I guess it was, I guess it was uh, ASCAP, and the conversation that I had with him was that um, even if you play a radio, a music radio station in your business, let's say you're, a, it's a good example, right. you're a dry cleaner, and you have an FM music station playing in, by law, you have to pay royalties for that. No well, one reason, does. The reason that these uh, performance rights companies started was. Back in back in the old days, uh, somebody'd open up a restaurant, and this is like before records. You know, we're, we're talking sheet music, mm -hmm. and somebody would be playing a song, and uh, you know, whoever you know, some guy opened a restaurant, and decided if they had music, he would bring more people in to have a nice meal. Right. And uh, songwriters got together and said, "Look, you're enhancing your your business with our songs, so we want a royalty." For I know, but I mean, can you imagine? But be just playing a radio station that you could actually. No one does. No one pays those. But, you know, you're a dry cleaner. You're not going to pay royalties. Yeah, and they don't go, like, you know, trying to beat up dry cleaners or, you know, it's mainly restaurants and places that... You're right, nightclubs and that kind of thing. But uh, right. I, I was surprised to learn that even playing an FM music radio station can get you... Uh, I mean, you can get in trouble with... They, right. can, they can sue you and collect. Well, and you know, the will. one scary thing, listening to her call, and, you know, I work in music and, you know put out independent records and things like that. And the one thing that with Napster and some of these uh, new technologies that people don't respect is the songwriter's copyright. Right. And, you know, people think, hey, I get all this music for free. I can download it and I don't have to pay for it. And, you know, big groups, they'll find a way to make money. They tour, they license their stuff for movies. Uh, you, tell that to, you tell that to Lars and Metallica. Yeah. All right. Thanks for I the mean, call. I'm sorry I'm out of time. I... 
I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, call back another night. Another hour of your phone calls are coming up. So stick with me right here on Talk Radio 790K, ABC. I'm a research scientist, so when I got arthritis, I did some research on pain rubs and found Capsaicin P with the ingredient doctors recommend most. Data shows that the ingredient in Capsaicin P attacks arthritis pain immediately. But unlike ordinary pain rubs, Capsaicin P is odor-free and actually gets more effective with continued use. The relief from Capsaicin P starts strong and gets stronger until Capsaicin P has raised your relief to a whole new level. The research raised my interest. Capsaicin P raised my level of relief. Use only as directed. Justice. It's in their blood. There are evil people in the world. But not always on their side. <laughs> 100 Center Street. Bay and D introduces a powerful new series starring Alan Arkin. A young girl is dead because of me. In this courtroom, 30 seconds can change a life forever. 100 Center Street. Every reckless act has its price. Premieres Monday, January 15th at 9, 8 Central, only on a &E. Help when you need it most. Dr. Tony Grad. Weeknights, 9 to midnight. Now, more of Mr. KABC on Talk Radio 790 KABC, the voice of Southern California. I am Mr. KABC with you till, till 9 o'clock tonight, here to take your phone calls without guest topics or a screener. And we'll continue live on this uh, Martin Luther King Jr. birthday and holiday at 1-800-222-KABC. Hi, you're on Mr. KABC. Good evening. Hello. How about you? On a... Uh, hello. Hey, Mr. K. Yeah, on a car phone. Welcome to the show, sir. Um, are you aware of any speed limit signs in like in Southern California that aren't in increments of five? And I'm not talking about garages on the road. No. You mean anything over like five miles an hour? Is there is or ten miles an hour? Is there anything that says twelve and a half miles per hour? Right. Or or, or sixty or sixty two miles an hour. Right. I've I've never seen one. Okay. Well, uh, I I deliver. Uh, I'm a delivery person at night, and uh, in the South Bay area, off the uh, 405, off of Crenshaw, when you get off the freeway there, northbound 405, um, it's actually 182nd Street. If you make a left, and it goes back under the 405 freeway, and, and as it goes around that turn, it says 27 miles an hour. On wow, the that's weird. Oh. That's really weird. Yeah, I even got out, I got out and looked at them, because I thought, well, maybe it's a joke, and maybe somebody made them. Right. But they're real signs. You know what you got to do? Get a, a take a picture of that. Can you get me like a digital pic? Do you have an email and a digital camera or something like that? Uh, I don't have a digital camera. Do you have one you can borrow from a friend? Maybe. Well, if you do that, I'll post it on the uh, kvc.com website. Okay, I'll try and get that for you. Yeah. Kind of like uh, there's a picture up there tonight that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. I'll, I'll look for it. Okay, thanks for the call. See ya. Bye. Hi, welcome. You're, that's weird. 27 miles an hour. Hi. You're on with Mr. KBC. Good evening. This me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you can handle one more thing on 25 to 6 till 4. Okay. Um, actually, the songwriter was writing about an experience of being up for 25 hours. Mm -hmm. It was 6 till 4 in the morning. And that's actually explained in the lyrics of the song. When he says that he, he's getting up to splash his face, should I try to do some more? 25 or six till four. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so the caller who called earlier didn't quite have it right, but he was closer than I was. Oh, he was close. Right. He was real close. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't repeated again. <laughs> okay. Glad you called in and corrected us. Thanks for setting it all straight. Oh, thanks a lot, honey. Appreciate the call. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye now. Hi, you're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Mr. KBC. Hi, another Mr. KBC Vixen. Yeah, Thank real Vixen. I have a question. I, if, you, if you recall, uh, there was a story, it was at least a year ago, there was this um, Hollywood director or producer or something like that. He was coming back from Palm Springs, and he just disappeared. Yeah, this is more than a year ago. This is uh, about three years ago. Was that long ago? Yeah, and he was found. You, you want to know what yeah. happened to him? I was trying to remember what his name was. I wanted to get some more information <sighs> on him. You know, I can't remember his name. No, 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 no. Not Philip Taylor Kramer. Different guy. Uh, we, we talked about Philip Taylor Kramer my first night here. That was four years ago. I, I remember it was the, they found out that the, the, his... His SUV went over the rail. That's, exa that's exactly right. He went into the California Aqueduct, uh -huh. and he was positively identified. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, someone had gone back and found. There was a weird story about that because some guy 
he was intrigued by it, and he just right, and he went and found it, and uh, so the woman who was the screenwriter's girlfriend thought that somehow he must have had something to do with it, that he could figure it out, and no one else could. Uh huh. And they had found, uh, you know, pieces of uh, his his mirror, his side view mirror, and something weird, and then they figured out that in fact he had gone over into a into the California aqueduct. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because I had seen that piece, and then I don't know what something got me thinking about it, and I just wanted to find some more about it. Was it was about two years ago. I yeah, remember his name. Yeah, uh, I, I can't. Know you know, if you keep listening, I, I want to say Soderbergh or something like that. Mm. Okay. But, yeah. Oh, that's so much for that idea. I figured if anyone, would, if anyone would know, you would. Well, I remember the story because uh, yeah. it was so bizarre and the circumstances around it. I remember the uh, the fiance or the girlfriend on the news, and she was. She was adamant that that, that he that the guy who found the the uh, he, I was in a Ford Explorer yeah that that somehow he must have had something to do with it. How else would he know? And then he met with her. This guy that did the he was he he had created some kind of a website or something, piecing it all together. And she was convinced that uh, that he he was somehow involved. And then when they met, she realized that he was just like a he called himself a private. He was like a uh, a sleuth. You know, uh-huh. he just wanted to, he j- just wanted to p- piece together a crime, and the and the guy was able to do it. Yeah. Oh well. Well, I'll keep listening, and maybe someone will know the answer in the meantime. The guy's name. What was his name? The screenwriter. Yeah. Yeah. Keep listening. I will. And may I hang up on myself? That's the honorable thing to do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Hi. Welcome. You're on, Mr. KBC. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. How are you? I'm better than most, not as good as some. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. My question for you is this. In the case of uh, Lee Michelson, uh, Mar Michelson, uh, how did she win that lawsuit? Oh, you're talking about uh, uh, Michelle Triola Marvin and uh, Marvin Mitchell. Not yeah. Marvin Mitchelson was the attorney, yeah. and it was Lee Marvin, and it was uh, the, the the palimony lawsuit. Pardon me. It was about palimony that someone should someone should be compensated even if they're not married. Someone should have that was that was what uh, uh, that she had won. And created a new legal term, which was palimony, where even if you're not married, you have to pay uh, to to a significant other who uh, was with you when you uh, accumulated assets. Is that is? Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Lee Marvin dead. Michelle Triola Marvin. Don't know. She hasn't been heard from. She might be Canadian, yeah. And uh, Marvin Mitchelson, he's had his share of troubles. In fact, I think he was in jail for a little while. But I think he's out and back at practicing law. Somewhere in Beverly Hills driving a Rolls Royce, I'm sure. Coming up to uh, 8 o'clock, this is Talk Radio 790 K ABC. I am Mr. KBC. Another hour of your phone calls are coming up. So stick with me right here on Talk Radio 790 K ABC. Mr. KBC with you every weeknight from 7 to 9 here to take your phone calls. Without guest topics, screeners, goofy sound effects, pre-recorded comedy, scripts, punted callers, or contrived viewpoints. Armed only with the microphones of the mighty American Broadcasting Company here to protect and serve tonight. Live on this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Taking your questions at 1-800-222-KBC. The three quiz questions where I ask you... Well, they're coming up uh, just before the uh, bottom of the hour. The answer's right after the 8.30 news. And uh, tonight, uh, if you go to kbc.com, click on the Mr. KBC quiz. You can preview the quiz questions, but you'll also see a picture that it is not as it appears. And I got a, 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 an email message from someone who's very upset about it. And I'll explain why in, uh, in just a little bit, but I got an, another email message just... Uh, uh, during the break from a uh, listener uh, on a uh, two-way message device who writes, uh, Mr. KBC, Gary DeVore was the writer in the SUV who disappeared. I think the sleuth realized that he might have been driving in the wrong direction. I think the main credit for Gary DeVore was the Billy Crystal, Gregory Hines action comedy, Running Scared. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, that's, that's the correct name. Yeah, Gary DeVore, now that I, I hear it. Uh, it rings a bell. All right, back to the phone lines and to your calls at 1-800-222-KBC. Hi, you're on Mr. KBC. Good well, evening. Well, somebody just told you who it was. It oh. Was Gary DeVore. He was a good friend of mine. Is so. that right? 
Huh? Hey, do you remember the story? Well, obviously, if he was a good friend of yours. What? What? Do you remember the, the uh, his fiance or his girlfriend? Wendy. Yeah. yeah how upset she was at well, the. Well, yeah. Well, she thought that the guy who had figured out the, he like used some maps and figured out what. So did I. <laughs> well, did you figure Kinda it out? Interesting, isn't it? Did you figure it out? No, nope, not yet. I can't figure it out. Have you ever driven across those things? They've got all kinds of wires. There was no trace of him going in there. Right, right. You but know I, mean, I mean, usually a skid marker, you see something going over. Well, what? Uh, what are you implying? What are you saying? You... I just don't know what happened to him. It just seems very strange. I just knew Gary very, very well, and I and he was a heck of a driver. He kept in touch with his wife all the way across that desert. Something happened up there. Well, probably he got sideswiped or cut off or, you know, made some kind of a, uh, emergency maneuver that he couldn't compensate for and well, went into the drink there. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know, nobody else knows either. Well, it seemed, it seemed as though right after the, um, uh, the guy who figured this all out met with the fiancé. Wendy, you said her name was? Yeah. Uh, it was his wife. She, she, it was his wife. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, I always remember being a fiancé or a girlfriend, but all right, his wife, she, she started singing a whole different tune. Well, I think everybody was wondering what's happened. I just know that I just can't believe that Gary would come out of a place and start, turn around and go the wrong way. I, you know, if you knew the person, you just could not believe him doing that. Well, it was an, uh, okay, um, how do I answer that? I don't know. <laughs> it was an accident that led to un, uh, someone's untimely uh, demise. Yeah, so. I know. It's a ve- I mean, you know, it's been a puzzle to everybody. Mm. And the other question How is, long ago was it, by the way? I think it's been about two years about ago. About two years, that's what I thought. a year before they found him. Right. So, yeah, but then, and then you mentioned Lee Marvin. Yes, well, a, caller, a caller asked about that. About, right, uh, well, she's married to uh, Dick Van Dyke. Is that right? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Michelle Triola Marvin married Dick Van Dyke. Right. Huh. Well, you're just all up on the gossip, aren't you? <laughs> all right. You're like my Hollywood reporter. Look at this. Oh, that's it. I'm in the wrong business, huh? What, what do you do? <laughs> I used to be in the business, but I'm not anymore. Wait, in what capacity? <laughs> I was a professional singer and actress. Uh-huh. Long time ago. All right. And did you know Michelle? Because she was a singer, too, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, and that was her whole thing, is that and she that said... that was it, because she said she worked the Playboy Club. I did, too. Yeah, and she gave up her, her job so that she could, you know, be his right. support system. Uh-huh. And that's how... Did she did she actually collect, or did, did she never no, really... I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. No, that's... Uh, I appreciate the answers. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Let's see. How about, uh, it's amazing who listens to the show, isn't it? Hi, you're on with Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hi, Mr. KBC. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I've got a comment on uh, the conversation you had earlier about rain in Pasadena. Yes. Uh, I think you're right. Most of the times in the winter, the, the storms do come in from the west or the northwest. From the northwest, south, and east. Right. Yeah. But then what happens, you know, we're sitting here at the base of the San Gabriel Mountains. Right. Over 5,000 feet. And as Who is we? Pasadena. Okay, Pasadena, right. Pasadena. Yeah. And what happens is the air gets pushed up over the mountains, and precipitation gets squeezed out of the clouds. Right. And a lot so of you're, times we get rain before L.A. and the rest of the basin does. Right, right. Just by just just because I, I'm with you on this, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I believe L.A. gets around 14 inches of rain a year, but in Pasadena we get over 20. Wow. Yeah, and uh, you know I, I live I work in the South Bay. So a lot of times I'm leaving work and it's raining here in Pasadena, and by the time I get to work it's dry. Uh-huh. It's the opposite. Coming from the South Bay, it's clear, uh-huh. and coming to Pasadena we'll have rain. Huh. And I believe it's because of the mountains. Right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Summertime, same thing. A lot of times we get thunderstorms uh, when the wind comes up from the south, and it'll be raining and thundery here, and I'll drive down to the south bay, and it's nothing. And occasionally you'll get a little flurry of snow uh, way up in Altadena. Yeah, uh, occasionally. Uh, we're pretty close to, to Altadena, and occasionally, you know, every few years, we'll get a little flurry. Nothing yet, huh? Nothing yet. Not this year. Because the snow level, Rob Marinko was uh, saying last week when we were in the middle of the storm, I guess it was uh, Wednesday last week, Tuesday or Wednesday last week, that the snow level was supposed to go down to 2,500 feet. Well, that's... That's Altadena. That's Altadena. Right. Yeah. So I believe it has to do with the San Gabriel's more than anything else. The All height and then the compression of the air as they go over the mountains. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the call. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi. Welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Okay, Mr. KBC. I got an answer for the 27-mile-an-hour thing. Go ahead. Okay, um, the 
reason that the Torrance Police Department did that was because they had um, they have a lot of problems. There's a school zone right up around that S curve, and they had a lot of people that were speeding through that S curve, and then it's kind of blind after you go onto the 405. Okay, so why not make it 25? Why 27 but though? 27 is such an odd number for exactly the same reason that this guy noticed it. It brings it, it like jars your attention to the speed. Hmm. And it really, it, it, they've they've seen that it really does work to have an oddball speed like that and get to get people to slow down. That's weird. I've never heard yeah, of that. Pretty wild. But yeah, it blew my mind. I took a the Redondo Beach Police have a thing called the Citizens Police Academy. Uh-huh. That's one of the questions I asked. I'm like, why? Who came up with 27 miles an hour? And they explained that that's what's the reason. Okay. Well, there's your right. answer. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. Bye bye. Hi. Welcome. You're on, Mr. Caves. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Hey, this is Bill. Hey, Bill. Listen, I just want to ask you something, and this is a, a political question. All right. And I have a reason for asking. But why are, why do you think that, I don't know, maybe if you think it, why are Republicans such hypocrites? And the reason I ask is called this guy Schmidt, uh, Senator Schmidt, that just died. You know, he was preaching family values so much, but he had illegitimate kids. Uh, yeah, now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I heard about did, did Gloria Allred talk about this today? Yes, she did. Oh, because I, I, uh, I'm sorry? Not today, but she did last week, I think. Uh, something I'm not, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, because I, I actually called her producer uh, because I've talked with Gloria about uh, about Schmidt because I, I wasn't sure if I got the guy straight, but he was the one, the state senator, whose daughter was Mary Letourneau. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, he was also the guy that Gloria Allred sued the pants off of. Right, because she said these terrible things about gay She people. said... You're going to save an RV fortune. Bounders up to twenty-two thousand off sticker. Pace arrows discounted up to twenty-four thousand dollars. Mallard trailers, luxury equipped, ninety-five hundred bucks. One twenty-five a month. I'm short on cash after Christmas. Well, don't worry. No money down. No payments till April. And special low show interest rates. Factory reps, seminars, accessories. Oh, absolutely. Even free admission. Over seven hundred new and used RVs slashed to rock bottom. Show prices. Take the Valley View. I said the Valley View exit off I-5, eight miles north of Disneyland to Mike Thompson's big New Year's RV show. Get down here. It's special. Like I said, you're going to save a fortune. These are okay. Bonder 365. Bonded in 400 down, 144 months, 10.8 APR. Discover Alaska and the Pacific Northwest with YMT Vacations and KABC listeners. That's right. An incredible tour to Alaska, July 29th. Here's the deal. You fly to Seattle. Then in Vancouver, you'll board Holland America's five-star luxury liner, the MS Vol. Dam. Cruise the inside passage to charming ports like Ketchikan, the salmon capital of the world, Juneau, Skagaway, and Glacier Bay. After you cruise, encounter the natural beauty of Montana, Wyoming, including Jackson Hole, and Yellowstone National Park. This deal is the guaranteed lowest price for KABC listeners to Alaska and the Pacific Northwest. From only $22.99 per person plus tax. Includes air, hotels, baggage handling, transfers, and a totally knowledgeable guide. Call one 800 922-9000 and plan to join KABC listeners in Alaska. Discover breathtaking Alaska and the Northwest. 800-922-9000. This is going to be fun. 1-800-922-9000. Here's the 790 KABC forecast. Heavy surf advisory through 9 p.m. tonight. Mostly cloudy this evening. Isolated showers and thunderstorms and patchy fog. Overnight lows in the 40s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny after morning fog. Highs in the mid-60s. Currently 49 in Sherman Oaks, 50 in Santa Ana, and 52 downtown at the Civic Center. I'm Timothy Greenwood, 790 KABC. 805, this is Talk Radio 790 KABC. Mr. KABC, we're going to premiere a, a new Mr. KABC theme song. Corey Stevens wrote, um, let's, play, let's play the old one first, then we'll talk about the creation of the new one. And uh, this is the old Corey Stevens theme song. Out of some five nights a week, Monday through Friday, my little radio dialed in to 790. You know it's not enough. You know it's not enough for you and me. I need my fortified and concentrated, undiluted, full stream as the KBC. Yeah, every night at 7 o'clock, every weekday and every night, turn on your radio. And everything's alright you know it's not enough You know it's not enough for you and me I need my fortified and concentrated Undiluted 
the full stream at the KABC. That's the uh, full-length version, which we actually don't usually play. We kind of play an edited one. And then uh, you took... And by the way, that, that song... Corey Stevens, we just recorded here at the uh, KBC uh, studios after... Uh, on a mini-disc. Yeah, right, just in one of the studios here after uh, after you'd been on with me one night. Oh, how long ago was that? I think it was about a year ago. About a year ago. All right, so uh, since then you've been telling me, next time I get into a studio to record my next album, yeah. I'm going to produce a full, you know, <laughs> orchestra version with... Uh, w what does the new version have on it? Who's on it, Well, it's got a... Uh... Going from the the last thing we did was uh, Mike Finnegan played B three on it. Who's uh, he's like a session guy. He's uh, played with everyone from Hendrix to Crosby, Stills and Nash as of late. Uh, he's like a legend, and he's the kind of guy you have lunch with, and you kind of you want to go, "Gee, Mike, tell us about Hendrix." More stories, yeah, you know, cool. But you're kind of cool, and you go, "Hey, uh, you know, by the way, <laughs> I heard uh, this." You know. <laughs> and what now? He plays what on the he album? He plays B three. Uh, what's Hammond, Pete? Oh. Hammond, Oregon. Oh, okay. Hammond. All right. So right. he came in to do a session, and then I, I said, "Hey, would you do a freebie? Uh, you know, for this song I wrote." And, then, and he has, it turned out he like he's a fan of your show. Oh, cool. He told told me to tell you he's a Mr. KBC vixen. Oh, well, I don't know that we <laughs> needed to know that, but all right. And what else? Uh, who else is on the album? And then, uh, well, my band, uh, Dave Salinas on drums, Will McGregor on bass, and and me. That's that's uh, and my my other guitar player was in Hawaii uh, playing with Glenn Fry and. <laughs> Now, how many uh, is this? Uh, is this uh, uh, an overdub? You got to do this in one take. What was? Uh, um, tell me well, a little the what's, history. Yeah, you know, the way we did it was was normally what the, the bass and drums are all live mm -hmm. together, and then I play in an isolation booth, and I'm you know singing through a mic, and I got my amp in another room, but we have got a mix in my headphones so I can hear my guitars, <clears throat> and. Basically, what I'm doing is a reference vocal and a reference guitar for the bass and drums. And then when I'm done, sometimes we'll you know we'll keep some of that stuff, but never the vocals. And but in this case, uh, all you know, the, all my guitar and vocals were just like from the reference mic and you know. All right. Reference. And uh, do we need to thank the guys at the studio that did oh, yeah, this recording? Oh yeah, that's right. Richard Barron and and Jeff Peters. Uh, at Sonora Recorders over on Las Vegas. Yeah, Florida. I went over there to, because uh, you were telling me, hey, we're re recording the song, come down and hang out. So I get there, yeah, Corey went home to paint windows. <laughs> That's what they told me, but here we have the song for you. So I, I've actually heard it, but I haven't, I haven't heard the full, it was kind of like a rough mix is what yeah. it was that I heard. And so uh, this is now the full, the full version. It's, on, it's uh, mastered onto a CD. And uh, anything else we need to know, or just uh, should we play it? Uh, oh, it's, it? it's, it's, it's kind of the... And again, uh, it, there's only that the one you heard sort of has four parts to it. Four, I don't know, what do you call them? Three verses, I think. Verses, okay. Yeah. And we cut it down to two, right? Yeah, that's so what this is. And this is this is the cut down version because yeah. we just don't have time that's on the two-hour show. It. I just figured that's how you yeah. used it. So. All right, so here's the uh, the new version. Uh, say again, all the people who are on the uh, uh, Will McGregor, Dave Salinas, and uh, Mike Finnegan, and myself. And Corey Stevens here on Talk Radio 790 KBC. I listen five nights a week, Monday through Friday. Got my little radio dialed in to 790. But you know it's not enough. You know it's not enough for you or me. I need my fortified and concentrated, undiluted full strength, Mr. KBC. Yeah, every night at 7 o'clock On every weekday night Turn on your radio Everything's alright But you know it's not enough You know it's not enough for you and me I need my fortified and concentrated I'm the dutiful string Mr. KBC <laughs> Yeah, that works yeah, that's a keeper. Well, that's great. Thank you, Corey, sure. for doing that for me. I really appreciate it. Corey Stevens' uh, albums are available in uh, record stores everywhere. Did you know you're also Napstered? I, I did a Napster uh, yeah, search you on you. Yeah, once. There was a couple songs. Yeah, a few of your songs. Uh, mostly from Road to Zen, which is, which is your last best album. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> we, don't this... talk, we don't talk about the album after that. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully this next album will be, you know, I don't know, maybe it'll be... Uh... How much of the next album is already done? It's like halfway. I, I, well, the basic tracks of about, uh, I don't know, it's about halfway done, I guess. How many songs? Well, I'd say there's like about four or five songs. That I have the basic tracks, too, and I just need to go back and 
but the problem is I have you know when you start out you know you just you know you when you're when you're first starting out you just want to go in and make a good record and, and, and basically what happens with your career is what used to take days takes weeks and then what used to take weeks takes months and mm -hmm. now what <laughs> used to take months takes years well yeah. you have you have you have four albums in record stores no, three blue drops of rain road to zen and Get the away. album that the un, the unmentioned album Get away yeah, and that's it that's it. Oh, I guess yeah. it is only three. All right. Uh, okay, so three albums. You get them at uh, record stores anywhere. Yeah. And uh, online, obviously, at uh, Amazon or any of those places. Or just check out uh, Napster, right? You don't care if people Napster your music, do you, or do you? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, exposure is what it is, and, you know, you can't prevent it. I mean, I think the lady that called earlier about wanting to duplicate her Bad idea. CDs. Yeah, well, you know, she should just, you know, continue to, you know, do CDs for her friends, but... You know, getting to make a venture out of it, a business yeah. venture out of it, it's just looking I for mean, trouble. It's almost like she'd have to get incorporated and hire an attorney, mm -hmm. and you know, just to get. I mean, there, it's just it would be very a big burden just to get things rolling. You know, we were talking about uh, when a song plays on the radio, and ultimately the artist gets a compensation from that for. Uh, well, actually, it's the songwriter, which in this case yeah. is you on all your albums. You're the songwriter. Yeah. There are a couple songs that you didn't write. Uh, a couple you did a cover cover a couple cover yeah. cover tunes on uh the first album blue drops of yeah. rain right and uh, like what happens do, do you actually get a check from from BMI and from I'm, I'm, ASCAP I'm, I'm actually yeah ASCAP and I get checks um well I get I have a publishing company so I get you know I get checks from from my publishing company What's the smallest check you've ever received it Just cents you know something like 21 cents Really they'll send you a check for 21 yeah. cents yeah. But well. for what? What did? What was that for? Do you even know? Well, I remember I got one, you know, for like, you know, airplay in Belgium <laughs> or, or, you know, something weird, you know. <laughs> Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many times do you think it played in Belgium for I you to get 21 I, cents? Yeah, I, I have no idea how they figured that out, you know. But That's weird. But I've gotten, you know, I, I continue to get, you know, checks for like Blue Drops of Rain. That, that song seems to be kind of a recurrent. Hmm. So. And some of them are actually pretty big checks, right? They actually yeah. pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten some pretty nice. And ones. do you think those will go on for, you know, do you think 25 years from now you'll still be getting a couple hundred bucks on a yeah, check I from... Yeah, I do. It's a, because when I first started out, I wasn't getting checks and, you know, it was like, I was told, well, it's because you're not in the system, you know, but the, as soon as you get a check, and, and, and it's true, like hmm. once you get a check, you end up getting, I, I think you get, well, you get paid uh, four times a year, hmm. so, you know. Well, you what do you think like someone like Paul McCartney with the Beatles gets oh. for it? Like, is it? Does he get millions of dollars even still today? I have no idea. I'm the wrong person. To, <laughs> I'd, I'd really like to know what the formula is, though. How they figure that? Yeah, out. Belgium times one is twenty-two cents. <laughs> yeah. Six times the airplay on you know Belgium's you know he rock is and oldies show. the richest musician in England. I do know that. Yeah, that was a Mr. KBC quiz quiz. Is that uh, how you know it? Uh, yeah. There was three. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Did it was, was it like the three richest? Yeah. So who else Mick was on that was list? Third and right. John, that's right. I think was second. Who was second? I think Elton John. I'm not sure. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll continue with your phone calls. Also, we're we going to play a new song from you. Yeah. Uh, but people can't get this, can they? It's right. Well, no. It's just I'm. Um, you know, I'm generous. I'm. <laughs> I'm giving it away. <laughs> the album's not even done, but I. All right. Well, this is a this is a song called "Write It Out." We'll play it in a couple <laughs> minutes here. Uh, a new Corey Stevens song. And we'll take your phone calls here at 1-800-222-KBC. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Yeah, hi, Mr. K. Hi, welcome, sir. Yeah, a couple of nights ago, you had a guy call you up and he asked you your favorite comedian. Uh-huh. Did you ever come up with anyone? You know, I, uh, he kind of threw a couple names at me, and, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> there's so many people I like. It's like, you get asked this question all the time, don't you, Corey? What's your, who's your favorite musician? And there's so many that, you've, you know, that have influenced what you do. Not that I'm a comedian, but but yeah. certainly uh, that you pay attention to and that you appreciate their talents and yeah, well, to be for asked. Me, that, I can usually just start naming a bunch of people. Right. they're happy. But well, you're a guitar player, so you yeah, yeah. inevitably you end up saying you know you Hendrix, say, and, yeah, right? Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan, <laughs> Steve Ray and, Vaughan. Clapton and, and, <laughs> yeah. and then like people are kind of listening for something that obscure. Yeah, like yeah. when you say Dwayne Allman or Lonnie Mac or right. something, then they that's kind of what they really want. By the way, so Dwayne, for you, Dwayne think, Allman is one of my favorite yeah. comedians. Yeah, <laughs> he's good. But I think what you should do to answer that question just have some is pat name, answer like, and just name about no name yeah. about five comedians you like well, and they'll go you know you when you say Dennis favorite. Miller yeah okay go ahead sir well number one the Babe Ruth uh, of comedians Groucho Marx hmm okay how do you feel about him you know I don't I haven't seen it first of all I hate slapstick comedy I know a lot of the stuff he did was slapstick 
So uh, that that wouldn't be it wouldn't be high on my list, and I, I, I certainly have not been exposed to enough of it. But you know, I, I, my dad I think is a very funny guy, and he's one of certainly one of my uh, comedic influences. <laughs> And I know he loved uh, uh, Groucho Marx, so I guess he'd have to be up there. What about uh, Richard Pryor? You know, and that's another one. I actually haven't seen a lot of Richard Pryor stuff, but but whatever I've seen, it's, you know. But, again, he's not really a contemporary for me. A contemporary for me, even though he's almost at least a decade older than me, would be like uh, Eddie Murphy, who is kind of like uh, the offspring of of Richard Richard Pryor. Yeah, certainly. Okay. All right. Thanks for the call, sir. All righty. Yeah, you know what I, I need to do? I need to just come up with a list of, like, five people. And yeah, because they, it's the obscure one that they're gonna they're really going to oh, latch really? on to. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Carrot Top. That's what you said. Carrot <laughs> Top. <laughs> That's all I needed. I was, oh, wow. You yeah, saw, I saw Carrot Top in Vegas. I saw Carrot Top in Vegas last week. He was good. He was very funny. You know what's funny is comedians hate Carrot Top. Every comedian that's ever been on the show when 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 the microphones are off and we're talking about comedy and comedy clubs and gigging and going around the country inevitably someone will mention carrot top and you just get this look of disdain like how could you even talk about <laughs> how could you even mention the name carrot top in this studio when i'm here and the truth is the guy's got a pretty funny act you know he is it's funny and, and comedians i know why comedians they're jealous and the reason why they're jealous is because a lot of comedians spend a lot of time reading the newspaper and crafting jokes and their jokes are dated. Like, you can't make Katherine Harris jokes now, right? <laughs> it, uh, you could do that a month ago, but now it's just, it's passe, right? But Carrot Top, he just comes in with a, with a you know, uh, like a truckload of props, and he makes people laugh, and makes millions. He makes so much money, and he packed in at this crowd at the, uh, at the MGM Grand, which is where we saw him, uh, Carrot Top, last week at the, uh, in Vegas. He was packing them in. And those tickets are, they're expensive to go, to go see a, 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 you know, a headliner in Vegas. And uh, he's packing them in and with, a, with a, you know, I'm sure the same act that he did uh, last uh, Saturday night. It's the same act he's going to be doing, you know, a month from now and the same act he did three months from, you know, ago. Anyway, uh, uh, Carrot Top's going to be probably on this show in April. He's coming really? to town. Yeah. So he'll come uh, hang with Mr. KBC. That's when we'll talk about Corey Stevens. You know, I think it's, what's interesting is when someone asks you who's your favorite, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like it's such a you know, it, it's it, you always have to weigh in like, you know, well, who, like say Jimi Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan. Mm. I think Steve Ray Vaughan was a much better guitar player. He was more polished and and everything. But you have to weigh in the fact that Hendrix came before him and he right. was such an innovator. It's like how many points are you, do you give Hendrix because <laughs> he was so innovative? I mean, he was right. probably the most innovative guitarist in the world. I mean, do you have to say he was the greatest because he was the most innovative, or, or you know? And how come Mark Knopfler's not on your list? Oh, he's up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like uh, do you like the new album? I, 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 you know, I actually heard some of it, and I do like uh, it. Sailing to Philadelphia. Uh, there's a, like a special guest on it, or something, right? Yeah, it's got a few people. It's got uh, uh, Brown Eyed Girl. What's his name? Oh, Van Morrison. Van Morrison's yeah. on it, and so is. Uh, uh, you've got a friend. What's his name? <laughs> James Taylor. James that's Taylor. Yeah, James Taylor. Taylor's on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 819 Talk Radio 790 K ABC. It's Mr. K ABC. Back for more. Corey Stevens hanging with Mr. K ABC after we check the latest traffic. I'm Timothy Greenwood on the KABC Traffic Watch. KABC Traffic Alert in Orange. The Costa Mesa Freeway, 55 northbound before Catella Avenue. An accident with injuries involving three vehicles blocking the carpool and left two lanes. Problem in Corona on the Riverside Freeway, 91 eastbound at Lincoln Avenue. An injury accident, one vehicle into the wall, and emergency units on the way. In Corona on the I-15 northbound, transition to the Riverside Freeway 91 westbound, an accident. East Los Angeles, San Bernardino Freeway, the 10 eastbound at Soto Street, fire debris on fire on the right side of the freeway. And a weather advisory, chains required for local mountains above 4,000 feet. On the KABC Traffic Watch, I'm Timothy Greenwood on Talk Radio 790. KABC. President of the Socks the Cat fan club. I love socks, uncategorically. Catapulted to fame. This was the interview was a catastrophe. The KABC Morning Show with Dave and Amy. Weekday mornings at 5.30 on The Voice of Southern California. Talk Radio 790, KABC. Erwin, I've got great news. Sit and Sleep is opening its ninth superstore in the city of industry, facing the 60 freeway next to the Pointy Hills Mall. Another grand opening next to the Pointy Hills Mall. 
I'm sure you're going to be giving away plenty of money, Larry. Irwin, now people all over the San Gabriel Valley can save money on the largest selection of brand name mattresses in the USA. Knowing you, Larry, I'm sure the discounts are going to be plentiful. You bet. All nine superstores are celebrating with a grand opening sale. Save hundreds on Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Spring Air, Stearns & Foster, Miralux, Nature's Rest, and Chatham and & Wells. And with your good credit, pay no deposit, no interest, and no payments for one whole year, and get free local delivery. No payments for a year? I'm going to need plenty of antacid, Larry. Visit the new Sit and Sleep in the City of Industry, facing the 60 Freeway next to the Twenty Hills Mall. Call 800-675-3536. You're killing me, Larry. Sit and Sleep will beat anyone's advertised price, so your mattress is free. You are in the fight of your life. Just you against your smoking addiction, one-on-one. -on -one. Trouble is, it's not a fair fight, and few people win it. But you can give yourself a fighting chance to win. There are prescription medications that can help you deal with your cravings and stop smoking. So you don't have to face it alone. Ask your doctor or call 1-888-959-STOP and give yourself a chance to win. The Sparks will fly. Gloria Allred and Mark Taylor, weekdays 1 to 3 p.m. Now, more of Mr. KABC on Talk Radio 790 KABC, the voice of Southern California. I am here till 9 o'clock tonight, taking your phone calls to Mr. KABC Quiz just minutes from now. Uh, three quiz questions, the answer's right after the 8.30 news. Uh, Corey Stevens is here. We're going to play uh, a new song that you can't get anywhere. You'll, you'll hear it here only first. Why are you pointing to your... Uh... Yeah, no, go ahead. You, you can turn your mic on. Okay. There you go. All right, let's go to the phone lines. We'll start taking some calls here, and we'll begin with you. Hi, welcome. You're on with Mr. KBC. Good evening. How about you? You're on with Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hi. Hello. You're on the air, sir. Go ahead. Hi. This is Bill in Burbank. Hey, Bill. Uh, I'm the guy that uh, got one of your CDs in Shanghai this year. Sent an uh, email to Mr. KBC about it, and I'm glad I got a hold of you finally. Oh, for Corey Stevens. Now, why would you... Why would, first of all... Do you think that was a bootleg CD or something that he got in I don't Shanghai? Know. Let's ask him about it. Describe it. Well, it was kind of strange. Uh, I was, uh, it was May the sixth, I believe, and uh, I was walking down the street in Shanghai, and they have a bunch of vendors on the street, and they have boxes full of uh, cutout CDs, and uh, they're not very fancy. They're not in jewel cases. They're just in a, a sleeve with a wow. thing wrapper. Wow. How much? Oh, and it, it, I think it was uh, probably sixty-five cents. Oh, ouch, <laughs> ouch. Yeah, that's, you know, it's probably pirated. It's probably a pirated uh, CD. But yeah. isn't that kind of weird that they would, they would choose? What, what album? Do you remember which album it was? Uh, it's the one you're, you've got a uh, white guitar over your back. It's a Zen. Yeah, Road to Zen. CD? Yeah, Road to Zen. That's, 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 yeah. uh, I think that's your best I'm album, by the way. worldwide now, I guess. Yeah, in no Shanghai. In Shanghai. <laughs> in Shanghai. Wow. In fact, I uh, almost uh, ended up in the, in the uh, pokey. Uh, the guy who was selling it, I guess, hadn't paid his dues with the local uh, well, cops. So business license, yeah. They started chasing him down the street, and he said to meet me around the corner and uh, <laughs> pay me for the... I bought a whole bunch of stuff. And That's funny. It, it turned out it was the only one that was any good. The rest of them were, had, had uh, been cut out uh, in the CD so you couldn't play them. Wow, that's weird. That's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> that's why so, I come on the show. Wow. <laughs> so it's going to be worth, like, a lot of money someday, huh? Yeah, I mean, does it does it look genuine? Does it, I mean, with all the packaging and the, other than the, the the fact that it doesn't have a jewel case, does the rest of it look like a, a, does it look like someone pressed it in their garage, or does it look like oh. some? No, no, it looked like a regular CD, wow. and uh, the the artwork uh, looked like you know something. It looked like it looked. You remember the cutouts in the old days that you could buy at the store, uh, from promo records and stuff like that. Right. That's what it looked like. It looked well, like uh, promo. The cutouts are the exact same thing as the record. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks for the call. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good uh, one. You too. Bye-bye. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Hey, how you doing, Corey? Uh, good. Hey, Corey, it's Mike Ramsey. Hey, Mike. How's, you guys, you're sounding better than ever. Oh, thanks. Is Mike a musician also? Mike uh, is a beer brewer. <laughs> well, it used to be. <laughs> a beer brewer. He used to, uh, used to work at the, uh, the Heritage Brewing Company. Where's that? It was uh, down in Dana Point in Orange County. Oh, is this we, had, a, we had Corey back in the day. Oh, is that right? Yeah, live entertainment. Oh, that's cool. Corey, got a couple questions for you. Okay. Uh, I see you have a new website under construction. Yes, that's true. How's that going? When's it going to be uh, up and running? Um, what was wrong with your old website? 
This is CoreyStevens.com, uh, no, com, right? Little, yeah, it's CoreyStevens.com. It's just that uh, some my buddies in Minneapolis took it over. They have a, a graphic place. Uh, they're called ASI Image Studios, and they're uh, they're you know really uh, that's what you know they're just uh, the the best. They're really good. They do they do like ads for magazines and uh, as well as other things. But anyhow, you know we're uh, we're, we're redoing it, and it's just it, I just kind of haven't been motivated. You know, what's going to be on the website? Um, information about your tours and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and you, you'll you'll be able to. Da- we want to do some newer stuff like download. Uh, be able, you can download some samples of the new music, like maybe forty five seconds of the new songs, mm. and the lyrics, and and I like to get some video stuff, but I don't know about the streaming. What happened to the beer the uh, the beer joint? <laughs> oh, the usual story. It's not there anymore, though, huh? No, it's not. Correct. Right. What are you doing now? Uh, I work for uh, a large multinational corporation. And if you told me the name of it? You would know it. Oh. All right. All right. Thanks for the call. No problem. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Do you know who he works for? Um, no, but... Oh, I was going to... Uh, Duff. Now I'm curious. All right. Hi, well... <laughs> Duff Beer. Yeah, right. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hey. Hi. Are you there? I am. Okay. It didn't sound like you guys were there. Now, um, I, I can't believe you could not remember who JT was. Or is. Who are you talking about, ma'am? You. I couldn't remember who JT oh, was or is. James Taylor. Oh, James Taylor, yeah. I mean, well, you know, sometimes names slip your mind. I know who he is. I know, but, you know, you went to SB, and he, yes. you, know, you, you claimed to be Mr. Cool. And I, I do? Just, I <laughs> <believe> <laughs> when did I claim to be Mr. Cool, exactly? I don't remember that show. Um, like, practically every night. Really? <laughs> and I can't believe that Corey even made a song for you. Why? Well, okay... Let me just say, Mr. KBC, yes. you are really fun to listen to. But? But sometimes you, you just act like such a pompous ass. <laughs> now, do you think that's true, Corey? You know, I, it's, I think it's... I've heard people make comments about, oh, you used to be better, <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it kind of comes in waves. I, it does. I think, you know, you're as good as uh, or better uh, than you were, like, you know, six, Yesterday. six years uh, ago. Yesterday. <laughs> a minute ago. A minute ago, yeah. No, the thing is, okay, what? say something brilliant. Like Doug McIntyre. Uh huh. Yeah, Doug's great. Doug is so brilliant. Yes. Are you his girlfriend or something? No, I wish I could be, but he already has one. He does. Yeah, he's got a fine-looking girlfriend. I bet he does. Mm-hmm. And he's got a fine brain. Yes, he does. But, um, okay, Corey. Yes. Now, um, you know, I like a woman who likes a man for his brain. Oh, definitely. And <laughs> and okay, of course, you no, know, Mr. But KBC Mr. KBC is, is so smart. I'm surprised you're dissing him. Yeah, really. What's oh, no, that about? No. You know, saying I wouldn't be listening to you if I didn't think that you were smart. Uh uh-huh. okay. So I'm not trying to be obnoxious, but sometimes a little late now. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> sometimes you are too. But Tried and succeeded. On my airwaves all the time. <laughs> okay. But all right. I would like Corey, if you could just be like, if you could do maybe like a little ditty about him, just right now, just like. In your brain, just whip something. No, out. he's not whipping out ditties on the air here tonight. <laughs> he he has he didn't even bring his guitar tonight. Okay, well, then, Mr. KB. You know what? You will be able to hear though. Listen to this. Get your tape recorders ready because uh, we're going to play a song that you have not you. This is not played anywhere, right? No, no, no one's got this. It last week. Yeah, this is it, uh, yeah, a brand new song called "Write It Out" by Corey Stevens. We're going to oh. yeah, we're going to play it and uh, and even even if uh, the album isn't even halfway done yet, so it's not like. Uh, you're going to you know, be able to go buy it in the record stores in the next month or two. This is at least a year away from anyone's uh, CD no, player, I'm right? No, like six months. God, All you right. are privileged. Six months. You are privileged because you are. get to hear. There you go. Yeah, but it was on your show. Exactly. So you know what? What's that? Just uh, don't be as obnoxious. All right. Like, sh- like be, you know, show that you care. All right. You know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. All right. I'm going to show you how much I care about you by hanging up on you. Thank you. All right. 830, this is Talk Radio. <laughs> 790 K ABC. Let me give you tonight's Mr. KBC three quiz questions. The answers coming up after the 830 news. And uh, more with Corey Stevens plus a new song that's no, no one's ever heard anywhere, right? This is, this is as... Well, the guys in the studio heard it. Yeah, but it's less, it's less than 10 people, right? Less than 10 people on the planet have heard this song, right? Uh, that's probably. safe to say? Yeah. L- fewer people have heard this song than know what it is. You know the it we were talking about yeah. earlier tonight? All right. Question number one. What movement, beginning in the early 1990s, was characterized by distorted guitars, 
dispirited vocals, and lots of flannel. That's question number one. Question number two, why can't you see the stars in photos or videos taken by astronauts? And the last of tonight's Mr. KBC three quiz questions, you get multiple choice on this one. Who said, from where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever? Was it Chief Joseph, Chief Sitting Bull, Emperor Hirohito, or Al Gore? The answers to these three questions are coming up right after we check the latest traffic and news and standing by in the KBC News Center with the latest. Here's Timothy Greenwood. Hello, I'm Timothy Greenwood in the 790 KBC Local News Center. Thank you, Mr. KBC. A La Crescenta woman accused of causing the deaths of two people in an alcohol-related accident on the Glendale Freeway last month pled not guilty today. Prosecutors have charged 26-year-old Na Kwok with gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated. The CHP says Kwok's car rear-ended another car on the freeway, which then exploded into flames. A 35-year-old man from Tahunga and a 15-year-old Burbank girl perished in the fire. According to the Glendale Police, Kwok's blood alcohol level was 0.18, well above the legal limit of 0.08. The missing mountain biker marooned in the Los Angeles National Forest has been found alive. Los Angeles County Sheriff's spokesperson Darren Harris has the details. Deputies have located Jeremy Galton, who's been the missing mountain biker in the Angeles National Forest. Jeremy was found in the Fox Creek area. Deputies report that he's in pretty good condition and he was apparently walking and talking. However, he has been airlifted to Huntington Memorial Hospital for observation and testing. He'd been missing for more than two days and was not prepared for the blizzard conditions that he encountered. If you want to go to the 2002 Winter Olympics and haven't gotten your tickets yet, you may be forced to watch the events on TV. More than a year remains before the games in Salt Lake City, and already more than one-third of the events are sold out. KABC News Time, 8.33. Here's the 790 KABC forecast. Heavy surf advisory through 9 o'clock tonight. Mostly cloudy, isolated showers and thunderstorms. Overnight low in the 40s. Tomorrow, after early morning fog, highs in the mid-60s. Currently 49 in Van Nuys, 50 in Orange, and 52 downtown at the Civic Center. On the KABC Traffic Watch, a new problem. South Los Angeles, the 110 northbound past Century Boulevard. A disabled vehicle with a person changing a tire at the center divider. Watch out for that person. KABC Traffic Alert in Orange. Costa Mesa Freeway 55 northbound before Catella Avenue. An accident with injuries involving three vehicles blocking the carpool and left two lanes. And in Corona, on the Riverside Freeway 91 eastbound at Lincoln Avenue, an injury accident. Solo vehicle into the wall, emergency vehicles on the way. On the KABC Traffic Watch, I'm Timothy Greenwood on Talk Radio, 790 KABC. Have you noticed that your hair is getting thin? Does baldness run in your family and you're beginning to wonder whether it could happen to you? You know there are millions of men and women in the United States who are losing their hair and frustrated because they can't get help. They believe the myth that they're losing their hair and there's nothing they can do. Al Rantel will tell you that is not so. Regenix offers you real science. Regenix is the only patented process of analysis and treatment designed to prevent baldness and to help turn that thinning hair around. They've been around over 20 years. They use the very latest methods. They know how to do this. And they don't make false promises. No growing hair on bald heads. But they can help you. And you can go up, get lab time done, find out what they can do for you, and start today. 1-800-REGENIX. The best call you'll make to save your hair, 1-800-REGENIX, located in the Cedars-Sinai Medical Office Tower in Los Angeles. The name and the number are the same, 1-800-REGENIX, REGENIX, for better hair. Justice, it's in their blood. There are evil people in the world. But not always on their side. Officers down! Officers down! 100 Center Street. A&D introduces a powerful new series starring Alan Arkin. A young girl is dead because of me. In this courtroom, 30 seconds can change your life forever. 100 Center Street. Every reckless act has its price. Premieres Monday, January 15th at 9, 8 Central, only on A&D. From Malibu to Moreno Valley. Talk Radio 790 KABC. The voice of Southern California. 835, this is Talk Radio 790. I am Mr. KBC here till 9 o'clock tonight after the news at 9. Dr. Tony Grant on Talk Radio 790. I'm here every weeknight from 7 to 9 on 790. Isn't that funny how that works? You should have you put that in the song somehow. Mr. KBC on 7 to 9 on 790. You can make that I only work. had one minute to work with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see here. You can, uh, we're going to give you tonight uh, the answers to the quiz 
questions. You can usually see the quiz questions uh, before the show if you go to kbc.com. Also, you can email me, my email address, mrkbc at kabc.com, or email directly uh, email me directly from the kbc.com website. You can do that as well with a, a pull-down menu. And uh, what else? Oh, a, a new Corey Stevens song. We're going to premiere it on this show in a few minutes. And uh, we need to answer the quiz questions first. So let's do that. How about uh, you? Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Hello. Hi, another Mr. KBC Vixen. Oh, I knew you were going to pick me. What? You know, I'm not sure what the... Um... Come on, these are easy questions. Okay. Question number, question number one. What movement, beginning in the early 1990s, was characterized by... Distorted gu- guitars. Am I saying that word right? Distorted? Yeah, I yeah. guess that is. Distorted guitars, dispirited vocals, and lots of flannel. Is it alternative? No. How old are you? I'm 32. Oh, this is. you should know the answer to this. My brain's just not functioning. Come on. Lots of flannel. Let's start with a G. I know, I've been trying to Yes, it starts with a G. G. I'll give you a hint. Uh, Seattle's... Uh, Nirvana, the Seattle band Nirvana, their 1991 song "Smells Like Teen Spirit" is considered the flashpoint for the movement. Gee. I know that song too. You know what? I just can't think of it. Really, you don't know this word? It's one I'm word. Sure that I do, Begins with a dr- G. It's uh, six sure letters. I you would absolutely know it. Yeah, you're 33. You're 33. You said or 32. Yeah, you should know this. All right. Question number two. We'll come back to it. Okay. Why can't you see the stars or in photos or videos taken by astronauts? Does it have anything to do with the the Earth's atmosphere, our ability to see the stars here, but not up there? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never was going to know that one either. Um, All right, I'm going to come back to you, okay? You have a question, right? I do. Okay, hang on. We'll come back to you. How about you? Do you have the answer for either of these questions? Okay. All right, you got to speak way up for me, sir. All right, I'll speak louder. Is that better? Much. Okay. First one would be grunge. Grunge is correct. Question number two? Would be because the shutter speed to catch the movement of the astronauts would be too fast to uh, expose the film long enough to that's a good answer it's not it's not absolutely correct let me give you the absolutely correct answer which is uh, such pictures do not ordinarily show stars because the stars are not bright enough in comparison with the nearby sun and the things that it shines on okay yeah and the last of tonight's mr. KBC three quiz questions who said from where the Sun now stands I will fight no more forever was that chief Joseph chief sitting bull Emperor Hirohito or Al Gore? Uh, it sounds like a very Indian thing to say, so I'm going to go with Chief Sitting Bull. Chief Sitting Bull? Yes. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. I'm sorry, that's not correct. That's too bad. Yeah. All right, I'll come back to you. Hang on, let me see if someone else has the answer. Do you? Hello? Yes, ma'am. No, unless it's Hero Hito. Nope, that's not correct either. How about you? Do you have the answer? Yeah, Chief, Chief Joseph. Chief Joseph, and who was Chief Joseph? He was an Indian chief who won some battle. No, he lost. He surrend- yeah, surrendered to the U.S. Cavalry. Hmm? Yep. All right. There's the answer. Tonight's three quiz questions. What do you have for us tonight? But, uh, um, well, that was it. I had the, uh, oh. the quiz right. question mostly. Although in the second one, uh, I had a slightly different answer, which is that, I mean, these photos, most of these photos on the moon and stuff are taken during the day, and you mm-hmm. can't see stars during the day if you're on the moon or on Earth. Uh, actually, if you were to... In fact, this was a quiz question from uh, earlier this week. If you were on the moon and you look up, what color will the sky be? be in the black. In the day. That's right, black. Yeah. All right, sir. Thanks for the call. Okay. Appreciate it. How about you? You're on Mr. K. BC. Good evening. Okay, Mr. K. Yes, sir. What's happening? You tell me. Well, I wanted to talk to Corey. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was really uh, uh, glad to hear him mention uh, Jimi Hendrix. And, uh, you know, the Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff, you know, I, what I saw of him was the, his hat laying next to the helicopter that crashed, you know. What do you mean? You actually saw it? No, I'm just Oh, kidding. you're saying metaphorically. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you know, that guy was more, more, more like a hippie, uh, hippie put-on type thing, you know. Um, 
But I wanted to ask... Well, go ahead, take him on, Corey. Corey's shaking his head like you don't get it at all. A hippie so. put oh, no, on? I, I, I just wanted to ask Corey... Are like, you saying Stevie Ray Vaughan was a poser? Yeah, I do. Oh, and he couldn't play his instrument? Well, he was a drunk. Well, he got he got sober for the last six years of his career. Did you career. ever did you ever see Stevie Ray Vaughan oh, yeah. play live? How I many saw times? Him seven times. Well, and and uh, did did he play drunk? Uh, the first time I saw him was at the Playboy Jazz Festival at the Hollywood Bowl, and and at, that was at the time when he was still using, and it was it was amazing. He was playing. Hey, Corey. It, yeah. I just think that uh, like you said, Jimi Hendrix. You know, he was uh, way ahead of his time. And he, yeah. was, he was fan, fantastic. You know, obviously people don't drive well drunk. Can people play music well drunk? Well, like, look at, you know, look at, at Charlie Parker and you know all those people. Billy yeah, Holiday. but that, but, but see, they were on heroin, and that's a different thing. <laughs> they weren't even they weren't even getting high at that point. Yeah. At a certain point, when you're using heroin, you're, you're you're not even you're not even getting high. You're just maintaining, right? Yeah. So uh, those th- uh, those don't count in my book. I'm talking about people who are. And cocaine is a weird thing because it's a stimulant, yeah. and the way it you know it just makes people euphoric, and, and and I could see being able to play on that. But what about alcohol? Being just yeah, I, drunk I, off your ass? Can you can you can yeah, you play I guitar? Yeah, there's lots of guys. Yeah, I mean, you could. there's lots of stories about you know guys like the sex pistol. You know, like the old you know blues guys that would drink a whole bottle of gin and you know. See, to me, the sex walk pistol, off stage. Is the Sex Pistols music to you? No, I, yeah, I don't think so either. Right? I mean, it's just hey, noise. Corey? I want to ask you, what what do you think about, um, or I, I would ask, w- would you consider doing some copies? You mean cover tunes? Yeah. Yeah, he, on, we were just talking about that on uh, on Blue Drops of Rain. Yeah, there's one or two cover tunes of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Well, there's right? a cover tune called Rich Man's Woman that was a Muddy Waters song. Right. He actually didn't write. And then uh, I did Lenny. Muddy Waters was a harp player, right? No, Muddy Waters had a harp player in his band, but he was a... He was a, a basically a, a rhythm guitar player and slide player and, and singer. singer. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask you. You know, I I mean, I really liked what uh, Belushi and Ackroyd did. You know. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask it if you'd consider doing a copy of Flip Flop and Fly or Hey Bartender or something like that. You know. Uh, maybe I think, you know, Hey Bartender's kind of been done. I think it's 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 overdone. Were the Blues Brothers good? Were they? Were I they yeah, great. I think so. I mean, Belushi was great. They I'm were, not a blues purist, but I, I saw him at the Universal Amphitheater before they put a roof on the place, so that was a long time ago. But it was, I thought it was a great. They had a great band. They had a know. great band, but were they good? I think they were good. They are. Yeah, I think they were. You know, they were entertaining. I mean, it's like is Mick Jagger a good singer? Well, it doesn't matter. You're you're you know he excites you, and you can't keep take your eyes off of him. And so I mean that's kind of what Belushi was. Belushi was kind of like a Mick Jagger. All know? right, let's play this new song. Write it out is uh, Corey Steuben, uh, Stevens uh, a song. It's on an album that's not released yet. It's not even it's not even done yet. So you're you're getting a, a real preview here. Uh, tell me a little about this song. Is it is it uh, is it for the blues purist or is it for is uh, it rock and roll? It's, it's kind of commercial and it's as like it's as commercial as I will get. You know like. And I think to my hardcore blues fans, they probably don't like it. Like that, like songs like "One More Time." Mm-hmm. And they probably they think that's commercial. And mm-hmm. nothing in common. Yeah, horrible, horrible. And did you say he's being in a movie called Perdition? Well, I think I pronounced that correctly. Did I not? P e r d i t i o n. Road to Perdition. Yeah, that's Eternal Damnation. Is what that means. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's uh, so. He's probably going to be in hell or something. Cool. Hey, a uh, couple things real quick. If that guy needs an example on uh, democratic uh, hip- hypocrites, yeah, hypocrisy, uh, top, hypocrisy, mm-hmm. great, great uh, subject would be sexual harassment. Uh, when there was a uh, senator from Oregon, Packwood, uh-huh. uh huh, he was accused by women of sexual harassment. It was like Barbara Boxer and these people walk over to the Senate and say, "Let's fry him." And whenever it's Clinton, it's like, oh, God, no. He's you know, he, he, and I, I hear what you're saying, except there were a lot of people who said that Packwood was actually very, uh, th- there were a lot of women's groups that were very torn about him because although it was clear he was involved in sexual harassment, it's not clear that he, uh, was, uh, what's, also, what's also clear is that he was a very progressive guy, even though he was a Republican. He was a very, pro- choice, yeah. very progressive guy, and he was also very pro-women's issues. Yeah. And, and a lot of women's groups, you make it sound like they said, let's go fry them. In fact, a lot of women's groups were very torn on whether or not they should, uh, they should go after Packwood. Well, I remember seeing it on TV of, of, of Boxer and all these women physically walking over to his office. Well, they couldn't, they couldn't ignore it because, because although he was a progressive guy when it came to, to women's issues, 
he personally was involved in sexual harassment. They had to stand against it. Yeah, but I mean, did that issue even come up? And by the way, who, other than, uh, other, <laughs> other than, uh, with the issue with Clinton and sexual harassment, the only person that claimed sexual harassment. Uh, before Kathleen Willey, and that's, you know, kind of, she didn't even file a lawsuit or anything. She just sort of came forward as a media stunt. Uh, the only person that claimed sexual harassment was, was Paula Jones, and Paula Jones' own attorneys said that uh, they, they spent more time trying to prove that, that the president was involved in sexual relations with other women more than they tried to say that anything happened between Paula Jones. And ultimately, Paula Jones has now revoked everything that she's said, and, and, and uh, in the issue of uh, Penthouse, where she appeared nude a couple months ago, the December issue, she made a statement that she was being pushed by all these white ring, right-wing groups that she actually didn't think it was such a terrible thing the president did to her. Well, I'll give you all those, but I mean, I can guarantee you that the minute it came out that any Republican had any kind of sexual harassment deal, uh, you know, I mean, I think it should be across the board. If, if you're going to be consistent and going to be legitimate and not be considered a hypocrite, I think it's what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And I think the partisan politics is the problem in this country right now. All right, that's I, why I didn't vote for either of these people. But that isn't why I called. Who did you vote for? Oh, I voted for uh, uh, Ralph Nader. Really? Absolutely. All right. And I've never voted for somebody other than a Republican my whole life. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. Hmm. But, uh, hey, uh, the reason I called you was about Burma. Yes. It's actually, they're calling it Myanmar now. Okay. But, uh, it's, it's, it's a very long story, but in a nutshell, they had uh, a revolution. Well, actually, they negotiated with Great Britain for their independence in 1948 after the war. Yeah, but why can't, why can't Californians in the uh, bastard oh, trade okay. with Burma? Okay. Myanmar. The existing government is a militaristic government. Mm -hmm. they're, they've had a Nobel Prize winner under house arrest for the last eight years. Hmm. And uh, basically, they're sitting on a gold mine over there. Unical is in the middle of all this because hmm. they've got a pipeline they're building with a French company over there. Wow. And, uh, but uh, there's, there's been accusations that Unical and this French company have used slave labor. They've just literally taken people at gunpoint to build this pipeline. And, when, it, uh, when, it, when have we ever had a problem with that? Uh, what, using slave labor? Right. Uh, well, I don't know. I have a problem with it. But. Well, you might, but I mean, I'm talking about when, it, when, it, when have we taken an active role against cu countries that have slave laborers? Um, I think you'd find a lot more, there's probably a lot more of those resolutions passed than you think. This is the Supreme Court last year that, that actually the state of Massachusetts made it that no country, uh, went to the Supreme Court, no company doing business in Massachusetts could be doing business in Myanmar, which if right. you don't believe in the government there, you call it Burma. You can tell... Which side yeah. people are on. All right. And, and is that true also in California, that we have a state resolution? That, that No, it's the city of Los Angeles. Oh, okay. And if you see, whenever you see Unical's, ha Unical's having their annual stockholders meeting, mm -hmm. you'll see, like, usually a good couple hundred people doing uh, street theater and all that protesting it, because it's, it's a pretty uh, restrictive, I don't know how, well, I guess you could say a pretty violent regime over there. And if I, if I, uh, if I buy Burma Shave, am I violating the... Uh, <laughs> No, no, but um, it's interesting. By the way, the only thing I know about Burma is Burma Shave, which probably has nothing to do with, with uh, the, the country Burma, now known as Myanmar. Okay, did you ever see the movie uh, Ridge, uh, Bridge on the River Kwai? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That was filmed there. All right, sir. Thank you for the call. Thank you. All right, when, it's, when I start whistling, it's time to move on. 830 this is Talk Radio 790K ABC. It's Mr. KBC. Let me give you tonight's three quiz questions. The answer is coming up right after the news. Question number one, what is the difference between a cowboy and a cowpoke? The difference between a cowboy and a cowpoke. Question number two, where in 1922 did Captain Turner of the Royal Air Force write the message? What, what is this question? <laughs> I totally screwed this up. Where in 1920 did capture the rail ever write the message? Oh, yeah. oh, I got it now. In 1922, where did Captain Turner of the Royal Air Force write the message, Hello, USA? That's question number two. Where did he write that? And the last of tonight's Mr. K, we see three quiz questions. Today is my, today is my birthday. I should say, today my birthday is celebrated in America. I'm considered the father of the modern civil rights movement. My philosophy of nonviolent resistance led to arrests on numerous occasions in the 1950s and 1960s. 
I organized the massive march on Washington, August 28th of 1963, which brought more than 200,000 people together. In 1964, I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Who am I? The answers to these three questions and more of your phone calls are coming up right after we check the latest traffic and news. With local news first, here's Timothy Greenwood. Thank you. In the KABC Local News Center, here's what's happening. Two men and a teenager accused of holding hostages during a robbery attempt at a Culver City Target store are scheduled for a preliminary hearing tomorrow at 1-800-222-KBC. Hi, you're on Mr. KBC. Good evening. Okay, it's me again. I didn't know Grinch. Again? <laughs> okay. No, not Grinch. Grunge. I said Grunge. All right. Grinch. Oh, she okay. said Grinch. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay, my question is about hair. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember from anthropology class, early Homo sap sapiens had much more all over body hair, and mm -hmm. obviously we don't now. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a continuing purpose, anthropological purpose for uh, armpit hair and pubic hair? There is, because that's actually the two places where you lose heat the fastest, especially if you're in cold water, for example. Uh, the, two, the, 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 the thing to do if you ever you know, find yourself in very cold water is to uh, protect you, you know, your armpits and your, and your genitals, which is where you, you lose the most heat, aside from the top of your head. Those are, those, are, those are the three places where you lose the most heat. How do you know that? I don't know. I just know <laughs> it. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. Wow, <laughs> I know. <it. laughs> that's amazing. But yeah, that's why you, that's, that, that's why we have the most hair there is because it's it's designed to to keep us warm there. Okay, can I have can I ask one more question? Sure. What happened to the bubonic plague? Is it still around in some part of the world somewhere? Uh, the plague actually is in a laboratory at um, uh, where do they have it's in Atlanta at the uh, Centers for Disease Control. They have they have samples of all kinds of. Uh, of uh, uh, viruses and bacteria, de deadly vet bacteria and viruses, and the plague is uh, it's not it's not an, it's not active, but it's we still have it. We know what it is. We know it's uh, it's DNA, mm -hmm. and uh, it could be replicated and could be unleashed if, if if someone wanted to do that. Well, why didn't it ever come back after the original plague? Why didn't it ever come back? Why didn't, yeah, why is it not around killing off people now? I mean, there was a plague, and then it was gone. Right. I mean, but it, it, because it was, it, it spread by uh, rats and uh, by uh, unhygienic uh, uh, environments. And uh, why? Not, why isn't it still around? I mean, it's, it kind of it ran its course. Uh, why isn't it still around? Maybe I'm in third world countries. Mm -hmm. have That's true. Major yeah. Why don't we see the? Why don't we see outbreaks of the plague? That's a good question. I don't. I don't have an answer for you. Well, if you find out, can you, you know, um, give the answer? I absolutely can. Okay, great. Yep, thanks for the call. Pre and I'll explain why in just a minute. But first, let's answer tonight's quiz questions. We'll start here with uh, with you. Hi, welcome. You're on Mr. KBC. Hi, Mr. KBC. Hi. How are you? This I am better than most, not as good as some in a car phone tonight, sir. Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I'm doing okay. No, no, I asked you if you're on a car phone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely. All right, question number one. What's the difference between a cowboy and a cowpoke? Uh, a cow, a uh, cowpoke is somebody who actually brands the cows themselves, and a cowboy is somebody that actually herds the cattle. Cowpoke's workday was dirty and often dull when it wasn't dangerous. They didn't ride tall in the saddle. They rode cattle trains tending to the stock. Periodically, they had to poke the cattle with a rod through the slats in the side of the cattle cars to make sure the animals were up and breathing, which is how cowpokes got their name. So question number two. Where, in 1922, did Captain Turner of the Royal Air Force write the message, Hello, USA? Uh, did he write it on the side of a mountain? No. Okay. No. I have no clue. Let me, see, have let, no let me see if anyone knows the answer to this. 1922 should help uh, give you a little time frame as to when this took place. Hi, you're on Mr. KBC. Mr. KBC. Yeah, do you have the answer? Finally. No. I want to ask you one thing. Well, I'll come back to you. we gotta, we got to get the quiz questions out of the way first. How about you? Do you know the answer? Hello? How about you? Hello? Is this me? Yeah, it is, sir. Welcome to the show. How you doing, sir? Good. 1922. Wasn't born then. Royal Air Force. Captain Turner. Where do you write the message? Hello, USA. No clue. All right. Let's see here. Uh, this, I thought, was the... E Actually, I think the next question is the easiest question, but... Hi, how about you? Do you know the answer? Yes, I do. Okay, where? Put it on his ass. 
All right, thank you for that. How about you? Do you have the answer? By the way, that, that answer is not correct. Hello? How about you? You're on, Mr. Cabezy. Good evening. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I don't know the answer either. You don't either. All right, hang on the line here. Let me try. Let's see here. How about uh, you? Do you have the answer? Yeah, he wrote it in the sky. That's exactly right. It was the first skywriting message in America. It was in 1922, Captain Turner of the Royal Air Force, Hello, USA, was the first message. And uh, you know, you're also a fellow conquistador. Thank you, sir. And the last of tonight's Mr. K, BC three quiz questions. You went to uh, you went to El Camino, sir. I sure did. What year did you graduate? Seventy eight. Oh, you're much older than me. Oh, sorry. I graduated in eighty five. Oh, yeah. I noticed I have more hair. Ouch. Oh. All right. The last of tonight's Mr. K, BC three quiz questions. Today is my today my birthday is celebrated in America. I want you to think. By the way, what is that buzz on your line there? I don't know. Uh, does it usually do that? No, it doesn't. Oh, all right. Do you hear it now? Uh-huh, I do. You do, okay. I'm considered the father of the modern civil rights movement. My philosophy of nonviolent resistance led to arrests on numerous occasions in the 1950s and 60s. I organized the massive March on Washington in 1963, which brought more than 200,000 people together. In 1964, I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Who am I? He has a dream. Martin Luther King. That's correct, Jr. yeah. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is correct. Nicely done tonight, sir. Very good. All right. Nice talking to you. Thank you for the call. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, let me explain to you what that photo is. If you go to uh, KBC. In fact, why don't I do it while I, <coughs> while I uh, explain what it is. But uh, KBC.com. And right there on the right side, you click on the uh, Mr. KBC quiz. It says click here. And then if you, uh, if you... Here's a look at tonight's questions. And then right there, what appears to be... What appears to be a pine tree is not a pine tree at all. Here's the email message that I received that was attached with this photograph. Here attached is a photo of a new menace creeping its way across America and the world. Cell phone antenna arrays atop fake trees. They look to the untrained eye like common lodgepole pine trees, albeit branchless the entire three-quarter bottom of its trunk. A closer look, and you'll notice foot pegs for climbing and the antenna array atop. Why can't they just be honest and proclaim to all within microwave striking distance that they don't give a crap about what a horrible mutation these emissions might bring about among the human populace? Or is that their plan? And uh, everyone who sees this picture, once you, once you look kind of carefully at the picture, you'll see that, in fact, uh, it is a uh, cell phone site disguised as a, uh, a lodgepole uh, pine tree. I actually think it's nice. I think it's, it's, uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather it be camouflaged than exposed. And uh, I'm not uh, a freak about uh, cellular radiation. Although there was a story today, and I, I, I've contended all along, that if there's going to be a problem with cellular radiation, it's not going to be brain cancer. It's going to be problems with your eyes. Because your eyes can't dissipate uh, uh, microwave radiation as uh, 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 other skin and flesh can. It's your eyes are unique in that respect. That's why, that's why through uh, exposure to uh, ultraviolet light, you get cataracts. And I, I actually think that's uh, probably over long-term exposure to uh, moderate levels of, of radiation like that, which is emitted from a cellular phone, might, if there is a problem, I, I think that's where it's likely to end up. There was just uh, today some research that, some German research that revealed uh, eye cancers. Uh, the cancer rate in the eyes three times higher among cellular phone users as other users. Uh, does that mean I'm going to stop using my cell phone? No.